Let's call this meeting to order. Special meeting and procedures. Eric. Thank you, sir. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, I'd like to, uh, tonight's meeting is about uh, the Armour Road Complete Street Project. It's a public meeting to take public input. Uh, I'd like to discuss the format for tonight's meeting. Um, the following has been approved by Mayor Stilo, who is, of course, the presiding officer for the meeting. Speakers have been asked to fill out a speaker card. Names have been entered into a document uh, in the order that they've signed up, which will be displayed on the screen. Speakers will come to the podium in the order of sign up. We'd ask the folks to just come on up after the last speaker in order to keep things moving along as quickly as we can. Uh, we do suggest that speakers identify themselves as a resident, business representative, or visitor. Uh, speakers will have three minutes each, and the time remaining to each speaker will be displayed on the screen. Uh, Mayor Stilo will be responsible for ensuring the speakers keep to their allotted time. We do ask that everyone commenting tonight respect that time limit. Speakers are reminded uh, that tonight's meeting is being broadcast on the city's cable channel and YouTube channel, and is being recorded. So we do ask that everyone be respectful in their tone and language tonight. Uh, council members shall not engage in dialogue with speakers or comment between speakers. Uh, council member discussion will occur at the conclusion of the public comment period tonight. Staff will not respond in the moment to questions that might be asked by speakers or points that might be made. Uh, staff will take notes, note any such items, and address them as best we can uh, at the conclusion of the public comment period, if asked to do so by the mayor and council. We urge all members of the audience to be respectful of whomever is speaking. Uh, members of the audience should not comment, gesture, applaud, or otherwise disrupt the meeting. Once everyone who wishes to speak has had an opportunity to do so, the mayor and city council will conduct discussion. Council members must be recognized by the mayor uh, before speaking. Council may choose to direct some kind of action by means of a motion, a second to the motion, and a roll call vote. After the conclusion of the special meeting, the mayor will call a recess in order to allow the room to clear so that the regular meeting may be conducted. The regular meeting is for the purpose of conducting certain necessary city business unrelated to the Armour Road Complete Street Project. No further council action or discussion on the Armour Road Complete Street Project is scheduled at the regular meeting that will follow the recess. I'll now present a brief staff report after which the study uh, council uh, can begin receiving public comment. Uh, tonight's meeting is for the purpose of taking public comments on the Armour Road Complete Street Project from the City Council to provide any direction as to future action. Uh, staff has provided you material along with supporting exhibits that outline the history of the discussions and implementation of the project, which goes back to the 2016 master plan. Since this project began, staff has received a number of inquiries as to what the thinking was uh, behind the Armour Road Complete Street project. Uh, in an effort to answer, we provide information about the 2016 master plan, which outlined broad goals for the kind of community North Kansas City wanted to be in the future. Uh, one vision theme in the master plan entitled Build a Safe Multimodal Network and Enhance the Pedestrian Scaled Environment included the principle of creating bicycle lanes. Also provided is a 2015 traffic study conducted by Olson Associates, which examined capacity on armor from Ozark to Fayette and concluded that armor could accommodate a lane reduction. The recommendations in the complete street plan, which was adopted by the City Council in December of 2017, included parking protected bicycle lanes between Fayette and Knox and buffered bicycle lanes between Ozark and Knox, which is what in fact was installed. Uh, we've also received numerous inquiries as to what opportunities there were for public input on this project prior to its commencement. We do discuss in the staff memo the planning process for the Armour Road Complete Street, which involved an advisory committee of residents and businesses and numerous public, numerous public meetings, including a demonstration event on the street. We've also received inquiries as to specific design elements that were included in the final design of the project. Uh, the engineering firm WSP, WSP was the designer of this project. A representative of WSP, Nick Voss, here at this table, is here tonight and can try to answer questions. I, I do want to caution, however, against trying to design adjustments to the completed project on the fly tonight. Uh, depending upon what might be asked of the engineer, the answer might simply be something along the lines of, we can go back and take a look and get back to you. But Mr. Voss will do the best he can. 
we've been asked what the impact of this project has been on travel times through the project mm -hmm. limits. Uh, WSP recently completed a travel time study for this project showing that travel times along the corridor were incre increased by an average of 33 seconds. Eastbound Armour Road travel time from Ozark to Burlington is now 3 minutes and 21 seconds on average. The staff memo also provides information for the record on the procurement process that occurred for design and construction, the amount spent to date on the project, planned future phases of this project, and the relationship of this project to other projects that are planned or under development. Staff will be happy during the council discussion portion of tonight's meeting to try to answer questions that council members may have. That concludes the staff report. Okay, are we ready for public input? Yes, sir. Okay. Who's up? <laughs> Jenny Wise, please come to the podium. Good evening. Good evening. Go, go ahead. My name is Jenny Wise, and I'm a resident of North Kansas City. And um, this is my first time with public speaking, so bear with me. Um, Joe and I moved here this last winter. Part of the reason the deciding factor to come here in the first place was we knew we were aware that the complete street project was happening. Um, when you have a project like this taking place in a city, it says to me that it's a forward-thinking city. They're thinking about walkability. They're thinking 20 years into the future. And they have good planning. And that was one of, one of the big reasons why Joe and I are here. We're commuters. Joe rides the bus. We both ride bikes. I drive. Um, so we came here, and we noticed that the um, the construction, the rollout of the project that actually started to take place mid-summer was kind of unceremoniously started. Um, there wasn't a lot of messaging. It just, it happened. People weren't prepared for it. Through traffic wasn't prepared for it. People coming in from Kansas City weren't prepared for it. And uh, pandemonium ensued. As you guys are well aware, there was a lot of stuff going on on social media. Um, there was no real rollout. There was no ribbon cutting. There was no party. Um, it just seems like those are the types of things that you do when you want a project to succeed, is you work on education. You work on reaching out to people. That didn't happen. Um, in my opinion, you guys have been here for like the four years that this has been taking place. At one time or another, each of you have voted to pass this along. And in my opinion, it's your job to defend this project. This isn't happening. Um, I'm really surprised by that. I think that uh, you owe it to the people of the city to do that. I think the other thing that you have not looked at is that there is a lot of support in this city for this project, and it's going to be more and more apparent as the days wear on. I am a group in a group of eight people who have been beating the streets to talk to people about this, and I think you'd be surprised. We're hearing a lot from people from the outside, from angry commuters, from people who have had their drive time slowed or inconvenienced in some way. and. I just think that we need to draw back from this and let calmer heads prevail. It's been emotional, and to rip it out now would be a waste of $687,000 that have been spent on this project. That's a lot of money. I'm, I'm sorry, I have three minutes Thank you. elapsed. Hi, my name is Lisa Toll, and I've been a resident of North Kansas City for 13 years. I am speaking today because I support the complete street plan, and I have from the beginning. So one thing I think was already mentioned that we need to take into account, this has been planned for for four years. In 2017, it was opened up to the public to come to meetings and give their input, and I went to both of those meetings, including meet on the street where we got to fill out surveys, what we liked, what we didn't like. 
an enormous amount of public outreach and planning has gone into the complete street plan. Let's talk money. We've already spent over $600,000 on the plans, um, engineering, and construction so far. That includes a $100,000 grant. We'll also have to pull funds from the Clay County Road District if you vote today to go back to how the streets were before complete streets started. What happens if we rip it out now? I think that the city will have a really difficult time raising funds for future projects. This is something that you guys voted for. You should be behind it. If you reverse course weeks after it's gone, its first phase one has been completed, when you spent four years planning for it, you're not going to get a lot of public support to fundraise. You're also going to have a hard time getting grants, not to mention retain and hire really good people to work for our city. We've been lucky so far. You should give it a chance. You need more information, okay? All we know right now is there's a big group of people that don't like it, and there's a big group of people that do like it. That is not enough information to take a drastic change in what has been voted for and planned for over and over. Take the time to collect data. Ask specific questions. What do people like? What do they not like? Have some information. I have some ideas to put out there. If we had bump outs that were physically and visually more prevalent instead of the sticks, if we had planter boxes or brick bump outs like we have in other areas, that would help to seclude the uh, parking area. There's a handicapped spot in front of the post office. The post office always had parallel parking in front of it. We've just squeezed the lanes. They put a handicapped spot there. I think you should move it around where the other handicapped spot is in the diagonal parking, giving two there. Finally, I would like to say you are our leaders. A vote for full removal is impulsive and it's a gross misuse of public funds. A vote against full removal tonight is not an endorsement. It's the responsible thing to do. You need to give this project the time that it deserves and give yourselves time to collect real data so we know what we like, what I'm we sorry. don't like, no. what we can I'm sorry, do. the time has lapsed. Thank you. Hi, my name is Jim Dunn. I graduated from North Kansas City High School nearly 40 years ago. I'm a lifelong Northland resident, and my wife and I moved back uh, to North Kansas City about a year ago. First of all, I want to commend the North Kansas City leadership. You provide high-quality services for us, amenities to, to the residents, the community center, the parks, the Wi-Fi, the trash, recycling. People don't know the incredible things that, that we are provided in this city, and I am so appreciative. You're open to innovation. And unfortunately, I don't think that the Armour Road reconfiguration was a good solution. You're going to hear many viewpoints today, bikes versus no bikes, uh, environmentally friendly transportation versus not. I support both of those things. So to me, those are not, that's a false choice. The issue for me strictly is this. Is it effective, good change? And I don't believe it is. And I urge you to reverse this decision. I've heard the argument a number of times, change is hard, give it time. Actually, good change isn't hard. Good change makes things easier. We're replete with examples. 210 at I-435 is a dream to drive through now. 35 North at 152 in Liberty, outstanding way to get back into that uh, corridor now. Diverging diamonds that we've seen pop up across the state are, have been terrific in terms of, of eliminating problems. So this isn't about stifling progress. The Armour Road project is not a good change. It's reduced traffic lanes, created stuttered and uh, irregular traffic flows. It's confusing. The use of non-standard street colors has been puzzling, I think, to, to some drivers. It creates unnecessary and dangerous parking spots. And frankly, a waste of precious road space um, that, that has been available. It's ne going to negatively impact uh, business. And I believe that the history that we've seen with those of us who've been around a while, the old ASB bridge, Paseo bridge, those bridge closures create tremendous strain on the system 
of North Kansas City. We're in a luxury period now. That luxury period is not going to be forever. And the reality is there need to be clear thoroughfares that allow for that kind of, of movement. I'm asking that you reverse this road project and return Armour Road to its original design. It's negatively impacting this community and it will continue to do so. I want to conclude my statements by simply saying this. I appreciate this forum. North Kansas City is government that works. I absolutely believe that. You've been open to innovation, but you're also willing to reconsider decisions that aren't working. Not every city does this. The fact that you're seeking feedback from your, commu from your community and from citizens is to be commended, and I appreciate it immensely. Thank you. I also want to thank my neighbors and fellow citizens for participating in this process. I'm sorry. Whether we agree or disagree. Time has lapsed. I appreciate it. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm Valerie Swearingen, resident 3008 Howell, where I have seen traffic calming work recently, so thank you for your efforts there. Um, in the interest of getting through my comments in the minutes, I'm going to kind of read. Um, my main concern with a complete street plan is in relation to the execution of the project, specifically as it relates to vision, three, vision theme number three of the city's 2006 master plan which Ms. Copeland called out in her memo for tonight's meeting, which starts out with, quote, establish memorable destinations. I think right now we're memorable, but not how we want to be. Um, so that is my recommendation. I think changes are needed. However, I don't support a full tear out of this project. My suggested solution is to extend the sidewalk to include the bike path. So it becomes one large bike path where then the curb, um, there's. It helps solve three things if you do that. Their plows can get through. We don't need to have an emergency snow route ordinance on the agenda. Um, parallel parking won't feel like it's in the middle of the street because it'll be up next to a curb where people are expecting to see it. And traffic calming will still happen, but it'll just happen in a familiar way where people are expecting to see it. It's not like they, the gentleman before mentioned with the various um, delineators and striping on the road. Um, I mentioned this on social media and got terrible feedback that cyclists and walkers should never be in the same path. If the goal is to reduce traffic speeds, it should reduce all traffic speeds in Northtown. I don't want speed cyclists gonna run me over with my kids walking down the street. I mean, if we wanna calm traffic, we need to calm all modes of traffic. Um, and then just my final comment is I'd like to guide the council and the mayor specifically, you guys are our leaders. Like a couple of people have already said, this is your opportunity to show us who elected you as elected officials, as our council persons and mayor, what you feel. You know, you're hearing people yelling this way or that way or for or against or burn it down or make it bigger, you know, everything. We need you guys to take all the input in, look at all the data, and then make your best decision on what needs to happen for Northtown. Y'all live here, you're here all the time. People come in and they shop and they leave and they drive through and they pass. But the residents, in my opinion, we are here all the time. <laughs> we wanna see what happens best in our community. So I give all nine of you my support to do what you feel is right. I just hope you take the time to do it and don't have a knee jerk reaction. Thank you. Thank you. Hi there, my name is Tim Bosler. I'm a resident here with my family. I work in North Kansas City. Uh, I also have commercial, commercial investment properties in North Kansas City. I had a beautifully prepared speech. It's phenomenal, really. I gave you copies of it, you can review it later. But I'm gonna cut to the quick. I want you guys to look at this. It's in your packet uh, that I gave to each of you. Basically what this shows is the parking spots. I'm not anti-bike. I think on this particular situation, I'm not anti-parking spots. What this shows, is a highlighted area, but where the parking spots are, each, excuse me, each building, park, community center, city hall has private parking or off-street parking to serve those needs. So I think I'd like to propose an alternative solution, which basically means uh, removing the parking spots and restrike the four lanes, remove the islands and the flower beds of iron, keep the bike lanes. Again, I say keep the bike lanes, but reinstall white vertical dividers at street intersections to delineate between the bike lanes and the traffic lanes. Uh, this is already existing right now uh, between Ozark and Lynn Street. I think you can carry that on all the way to Fayette. Thank you very much. Thank you.
Good evening, <coughs> Mayor and Council and staff. Bill Sanders, 3000 Swift Garden Apartments. I'm here to support the project that we have. I feel that we need not throw the baby out with the bathwater. I think that we've got a lot of money and time invested in it and that we should tweak it if necessary as we move along on our course. I'm no construction person, so I can't give you any definitive ideas about what should be added or subtracted or taken away. I did take a straw poll of the complex and of course older people such as myself are reluctant to change and uh, especially when it comes to driving. So I didn't get a very good straw poll in favor of the project. But you know, we can learn. Old people are not incapable of doing things and learning. And I think it behooves the city to figure out a way to give some instruction. Maybe one of our, or two of our city council people that represent the gardens could come down at a meeting sometime and maybe kind of assuage the feelings that go against the, the, uh, the project. Uh, education is an important thing, but I think we'd be very wasteful of taxpayer dollars. We'd be very wasteful of time. You tear that thing up, you've got an expense to tear it up, then the whole street is jacked up for weeks and months. It'll be just like nothing. So let's leave it alone, but tweak it as we go along. And gosh, I've spent all my time and finished. Thank you, Thank you very much. <clears throat> Hi there, Council. Um, my name is Kristen Tarter, and I am a visitor who lives in Gladstone. And I know that plans like this are not done quickly. I worked with the Shaping Our Future Committee that recently um, finished in Gladstone, and so many of our residents were asking for complete streets. They like this idea, they appreciate the innovation, and I don't need to provide you any more data. You have seen studies. You have taken your time with this. You've looked at the health benefits, the environmental benefits, the traffic benefits, and there are so many things that go into creating a good, strong, thriving community. And some of the plans that you guys were developing, I'm not gonna lie, we took a look at <laughs> um, and appreciated the thought and innovation that you guys were, were doing here. Um, what I can provide you is some anecdotal, anecdata, I guess. Um, my husband works for Cerner, and they have a nice bike community there. And providing the cyclo track from that end of town to bring it into the complete streets plan makes it really nice for some of them who want to get lunch down over here. Um, makes it really handy um, on the weekends or even just after work. Me and my daughter, who's four, can come meet our husband and father and go to Dag Park or Mackin and have the ability to walk and bike and visit and spend money and play and work and spend lots of time here. And we really, really enjoy it. And so I'd encourage you to exercise some patience and maybe give it a little more time. I would strongly, strongly be disappointed if there was a no vote today. Um, maybe modifications, sure, but a straight rip out of things would just break my heart and kind of terrify me for the precedent it would set coming from these plans in the further north. Um, not that you have to base policy on us. <laughs> um, so thank you for your time, thank you for your innovation, thank you for your vision, and thank you for allowing a forum like this to happen. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, my name is Jason Hanneman. I am a visitor from the city of Westwood, Kansas. I am, in fact, a city council member in the city of Westwood, Kansas which means that I, like all of you, am a council member from a small first ring suburb. I know what it's like to sit in a room full of people, some of whom disagree with what you're talking about, some of whom agree, where you feel the tension, and where you know that no matter what decision you're gonna make, it can be difficult, and it's really difficult when you've got your neighbor, a coworker, or even someone from your family who feels differently than you do. <coughs> I'm here tonight to voice my support for the Armour bike lanes. Um, North Kansas City is actually one of the cities that I look at when I think, what do I want my community to be like? I saw pictures of the Armour redesign uh, going up on Twitter, and I went to the city's website and asked the 
uh, planning director to send me the information that you guys had undertaken uh, in the past to do this, this process. Um, when I read it, I was blown away. City staff did work that was well beyond what most small cities uh, could hope to have come out of staff work. You had a master plan, a complete streets plan, a pop-up demo, a parking plan, and then implementation. This is how the process should work, but in small cities, we don't always make it work that well. We have competing priorities, we have competing needs for resources, we have staff turnover, we have council turnover. This may look like a big change, but it's tied directly to prior public input, and I, for one, am jealous of this project and for what it represents for your community. I came here tonight, I parked in an on-street parking, I got something to eat, I walked the length of armor, I had no trouble navigating the street, I had no trouble getting out of my vehicle. It was a beautiful, small, downtown environment, and I loved it. So make improvements where, where necessary and gather as much data as you can. But don't undo three years and hundreds of thousands of dollars <coughs> of work without giving it an opportunity to succeed. As people have time to adjust, this quarter will become more comfortable, which will attract more people, which will mean businesses will do better, and it will be ultimately be safer for everyone. As elected officials, I know that the hardest votes are not whether to raise taxes, whether to hire more police officers. It's not the black and white votes. It's votes where there's, it's a vote that reflects what we value. Safety, comfort, the local economy. I think everyone in this room, regardless of whether they agree on the specifics, can get behind those values. Thank you for your time. Joe Gower to the, to the podium. Evening. I'm going to try and keep my comments here pretty short. Um, the, the big picture of this project is, you know, we put a lot of uh, discussion into bike lane, no bike lane. This is about taking those uh, blocks of our downtown area and changing them from a four-lane highway into a two-lane main street. I think that that's sort of the long and short of what this project is about. It's not a perfect project. Um, the people who are for these changes, we get stuck in the same traffic jams as everybody else. It, there are tweaks that can be done, things that are very fixable. And I feel like if we're going to do a very hasty turnaround project and costly one um, that's based off of a public safety emergency, then I think that, and I know that we can't interact with city staff right now, but before there's a vote, that we can hear from the police department and fire department on that and get their opinions. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Erin Gabert, and I'm a visitor here tonight. I'm the Senior Community Impact Director at the American Heart Association, and I'm here tonight to share our support of the configurations that have been made to Armour Road. We know that complete streets create safer spaces for everyone, and safe streets and sidewalks means healthier communities. Traffic calming elements make active transportation, like biking and walking, much less intimidating for people. And when people feel safe, they're much more likely to be active. Biking and walking have a direct impact on a person's risk of developing heart disease and, or having a stroke, which is why I have such an interest in this. In fact, just 30 minutes of physical activity a day will significantly improve your cardiovascular health. By creating spaces that are safe and comfortable for the community to get that activity, you're sending a message that their health matters to you. I would also like to note that while it's tempting to assume that bike lanes alone are the answer, pedestrians cannot be forgotten in our efforts to make Armour Road a safe and walkable part of the community. There are numerous elements in the plan like bump outs, decorative crosswalks, and landscaping that are imperative to encouraging people to walk more. In supporting these changes, you are saying that you want a streetscape that preserves a high quality of life and positive health outcomes for residents and visitors alike. The new Armour Road ensures that the city moves in a direction that makes that a reality. It's for those reasons that the American Heart Association is urging you to keep these changes on Armour Road intact. These changes will encourage the sort of active transportation we need to keep people engaged and healthier for longer. 
And on a personal note, while I want to empathize for individuals whose drives are inconvenienced by an extra 30 seconds or so that was mentioned earlier, I have a hard time understanding and believing how those 30 seconds can be more important than the health and safety of residents in North Kansas City and the visitors to the area as well. I'd just like to note that we are working on the air conditioning. We know it's warm. Thank you for serving on the city council. I realize that none of you are here solely because you love or hate bike lanes. I live at 2621 Vernon. This is my second house in 27 years as a homeowner here. And I have attended two of the different bike meetings where we voted with stickers and marbles. And I did not want to vote for any of those plans. But there was no place to vote no. And was my, I was slow to realize that this is where I needed to come and speak my mind. And so now I'm here because I do not feel like my opinion has been heard. I'm not against all bike lanes. I'm against bike lanes on the major thoroughfares. I don't want to hurt a cyclist, but at this point, I'm afraid to make a turn off of Armour Road to go to the library, to go to the post office. You, you have to watch for blocks to make sure there aren't cyclists in the cycle lanes before you turn. And if there are cars parked there, it's even worse. I no longer really feel like you want my business. You only want the business of the cyclists. So in closing, I guess I have a few questions that I would like to put out there. How is the success or failure of this measured? Was any consideration given to making the alleyways be the bike paths? And what about motorized scooters? Where, where do they fit into this equation? Are they on the bike paths or pedestrians or with the cars? And since cyclists and motorized scooters don't have to have licenses, they seem to never get any tickets when they don't obey the traffic signals. How does that mean they always have the right of way? And why can't citizens of North Kansas City actually vote on whether we want to have bike lanes or not? What does it take to get this on the ballot? Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you very much, Mayor Stilo, for holding this meeting because up until now, my concerns have fallen on deaf ears, um, with the exception of Mayor Stilo. So thank you. Now I will read an excerpt from my September 18th correspondent to Council Member Jesse Smith, which I subsequently copied to my two ward members, Rita Pierce and Bryant DeLong. My primary concern in this case, which I expressed to Chief Beamer at the last meeting, is the lack of transparency between city staff, council, and residents. I think you, meaning Jesse, and the entire city council should consider that each staff member may be pushing his or her own personal agenda at the expense of existing residents and businesses. I am deeply concerned about the continued lack of response to public comments by city staff and council. It seems to me that city council is accepting staff recommendations blindly without considering the interests of the community or appropriately addressing citizen and property owner concerns. The city has made a habit, as in the case of Armour Road, of suggesting and passing improvements to roadways without addressing any public concerns regarding safety and community business relationships. The claims you are making about safety and visibility are unsubstantiated. Staff's claim that we won't pass anything that is unsafe is not true and hasn't been true historically for the special interests and lobbyist groups, aka Bike Walk KC, that the city is currently catering to. See Armour Boulevard in Kansas City, Missouri. I would like to see incident report statistics for the recent Armour Road improvements. I'm willing to bet there has been an increase in accidents based on observations from people who are here every day, yet whose opinions are being actively ignored. Staff and council's recent tactics seem to be dissolving all trust between the city, city council, residents, and business owners. No feedback I have heard has been positive. Thank you. Thank you again, Mayor, for having this meeting. It means a lot to me. And thank you, Council, for hearing my opinion. Thank you. 
My name is Maribeth Boone. I'm representing the mop bucket. It's been on Armour Road for over 20 years. Our problem with the change to Armour Road is not about the bicycle lane itself. It is about the design of the road and the safety issue we, had, we have observed. We have had issues getting our deliveries. Trucks, uh, the big semis can't get into our parking lot. They can't get in safely. They can't get out safely. There's nowhere for them to park on the street any longer. Um, I will provide you with documentation that will support all that I have to say. North Kansas City is an industrial town. Residential areas only make up a quarter of the city according to the official zoning map. The majority of, of those of us that work here commute from greater metro area, most of which are 10 miles outside of the city limits. Having parking spaces in between the lane of traffic and the bike lane poses a safety issue, not only for the bicyclists, but for the motorists and the people parked as well. If a car is turning into our business, they have to cross in front of a parked vehicle and cross the bike lane, and you can't see if a bike is in that lane or not. More safety concerns, emergency vehicles cannot get through traffic as there is no, more, no room for vehicles to move over to let them through. They cannot turn onto armor off, off of iron, which they can't turn right, excuse me, on armor off of iron, which means if I have, if I have a life or death emergency in, in the store, they can't get to me. Every second counts in an emergency. Traffic has been going through the neighborhoods, increasing, increasing the safety risks in the small amount of the residential area we do have. We have witnessed multiple wrecks. We have witnessed road rage incidents. Where is the snow going to go this winter? How will the streets get cleared with the white pillars all over the road? How will you apply salt between the parking spaces, bicycle lanes, and sidewalks? How will the city plow the road into our business so that the customers can get in there safely? The parking spaces in the middle of the road is dangerous. You cannot get in or out of the vehicle. If you are, if you are handicapped and parked in one of these provided handicapped parking spaces, neither side of the vehicle is compliance with the ADA regulations. According to the 2010 ADA design standards from the US Department of Justice, the access aisle must be five feet wide minimum to connect to a pedestrian access route. The access aisle must not encroach on a vehicular travel lane and compile with the technical requirements and surfaces. The artistic colored crosswalks is another issue that has nothing to do with the bike lane, but further makes the road unsafe. According to David Kirshner and the Federal Highway Administration Department of Transportation, crosswalk art is not permitted. This art installation can take uh, drivers and pedestrians' attention away from the traffic conditions and propose unrelated to safety condition. The crosswalk mark markings are to be standard. If there's an accident in this intersection, the town is open to liability based on the non-compliance traffic control devices they would knowingly have installed. Additionally, funds can be pulled from the agencies that you're getting this money to do these road works from. Sorry, time. And I do have that information for you. I don't know who to give it to. Good evening. I'm Karen Adams, the owner of the Mop Bucket. In closing, we believe this was an unnecessary project. Businesses are suffering and have lost revenues because people cannot get to their establishments in a timely manner or refuse to come to North Kansas City at all. There are so few retail businesses that have any longevity in this city. What are we doing? My staff and I are at the office for 50 plus hours, and you're more than happy to, to come join us and have a front row seat to the whole mess. When the project was started, every customer had, would come in, ask what the heck are they doing to the road since we had no prior knowledge. We started the petition to return Armour Road back to four lanes of traffic. With 260 plus signatures and statements of complaints, the most common complaint you will see is that it is very unsafe, confusing, waste of taxpayer money, and dangerous just to sight a few. Plus, it is difficult to come to the mop bucket. These voices need to be heard. We sincerely hope that you will take the time to read these comments and complaints as these folks took their time to come in and sign them. Part of our conscience is a fight for safety. There is enough texting, phone calls, and road rage that is distracting. I don't want to see anyone hurt or killed. Cyclists, pedestrians, or motorists are all in danger. There are cars, trucks, buses, trash trucks, semi-trucks weighing up to 3,500 pounds plus and are going up and down Armour Road, even with this new bike path. I don't want to see someone that is hurt, and I don't want to have to live with it for the rest of my life. 
understand there are big ifs, but what if that if happens? We're all responsible. I'm responsible if I don't complain right now. I wish I could express extreme emotions for those who came to sign the petition. As many have stayed and vented five and 10 minutes because they are so bothered by such change. Remember, these are citizens and neighbors. We must have compassion for the lives and safety in our community. Life is difficult anyway. Why do we need to add to it? We have been in business for 33 years. North of the river is my home. I grew up here. I spend more time, more hours than I do at home at that store. It's difficult to operate a business. You just made it harder. This is impacting our business and livelihoods. How would you like it if it was your job? How would you like it if it was your business? I would like to know, does this North Kansas City have a mission statement? We were unable to find one. How many warnings and tickets have the police been involved in since this transition? And what's North Kansas City's uh, purpose? Our emergency vehicles are impeded by the obstruction of islands and markings. Their job is to provide safety. They're in jeopardy of performing their civil duty and their responsibility. What is North Kansas so, City going to do about this? And life is difficult enough as it is. Thank you. Hi, my name is Lindsay McGrone. I'm a resident of North Kansas City and I'm in favor of keeping the Armour Road Complete Street Project in place. I am a lifelong resident of the Northland. When my husband and I decided we wanted to move closer to downtown, we chose North Kansas City as our new home for many reasons, not least of which was the small town feel in the middle of a big city. We were also impressed with the city's 2016 master plan and we were excited to be part of something so innovative and exciting. As residents, we both love that we can walk or bike around our hometown. Our Saturday nights are often spent walking from home to dinner or to a movie or concert and back home after a stop for a beer at one of the breweries. On Sunday mornings, you can typically find us biking to the Y or walking to the Colony for coffee. The Armour Road improvements further emphasize the small town feeling we love, extending the main street effect down the corridor, making the area safer and more friendly for cyclists and pedestrians. We notice more people biking around town and through neighborhoods and more people out walking. We also feel safer as we cross Armour at Iron to go to the Y as the traffic moves at a more reasonable pace. Improvements like this are part of what makes North Kansas City special, vibrant, and such an appealing place to live. It is short-sighted and irresponsible to consider tearing out something that contributes so positively to the area without thoughtful consideration. Tearing this out based on anecdotes gathered days after it went into effect without meaningful adjustment period and measured analysis of the pros and cons is, as Mr. Sanders said, throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Anyone who is in favor of that is not a good steward of our taxpayer money. As a proud citizen of North Kansas City and someone who embraces the ideas and planning that led to those changes, I ask that they remain in place and be given a chance to further demonstrate their value to our community and to give you, our council members, a chance to use time and data to make any modifications if necessary. Thank you. Okay. Can I ask one question on procedure? Good evening. Uh, first off, I want to apologize for my strained voice. I spent three hours at the Chiefs game on Sunday <laughs> screaming. Uh, uh, my name is Frank McGrone. Uh, I'm a resident of North Kansas City, and I'm in favor of uh, keeping the current layout, at least not a complete uh, reversal. Uh, I drive between Swift and I-35 on Armour every morning and evening during my rush hour commute, and six months of the year, uh, while the weather allows it, I uh, walk or bike to the YMCA almost daily. Uh, since the introduction of the changes, you know, I've seen the traffic flow get worse at the beginning, but I've also seen the improvements uh, daily, and I wasn't surprised to hear the 30-second uh, increase in commute time that you mentioned. And I think uh, since last week, that's probably improved also, which uh, perfectly aligns with what I've experienced. And I believe that uh, it'll just continue to get better as people get used to it. Uh, I'd gladly give up 30 seconds of my day to make crossing the street and riding bikes safer for everybody. Uh, tearing this out after only two weeks doesn't make sense, uh, and I'm very concerned to hear a, a councilman explain during the last meeting that he was already ready to vote on this without public comment. 
uh, I would hope that the entire council tonight uh, listens with an open mind to the opinions of the citizens and the businesses of North Kansas City and chooses to represent us. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening. I'm Marin Moorfield. I'm a visitor. Um, I'm here with my husband, Thomas, and we live right across the heart of America Bridge from North Kansas City in Columbus Park. We marked visitor on the speaker sheet, but that doesn't really say enough about what North Kansas City means to us. We buy groceries in North Kansas City. Our pharmacy is in North Kansas City. Our banker and mortgage company is in North Kansas City. We, uh, we dine and we drink in North Kansas City. We go to movies and bowl, and we walk on trails in North Kansas City. North Kansas City is special to us because it offers all of these things and more every day. But it is also special to us because we've seen the commitment that the city makes to improving everybody's quality of life. When we visit North Kansas City, we rarely drive. For a period last year, we did not have access to a car, and all of our trips were by bus, bike, or foot by necessity. Projects like Armor Road set North Kansas City apart as a place that cares about the safety and comfort of its citizens as a place that is committed to supporting the activity and street life of its downtown businesses, that understands the great potential in making the community more livable than it is today. These are the things that make us want to spend time and money here and come more often. My husband and I are not unique. There are so many who choose to live, work, and visit North Kansas City because they're inspired by the commitment and leadership of North Kansas City that has shown to improve safety and quality of life. Please don't close the door on us. Please don't reject and move um, to make this a more inclusive and livable future for um, the familiar status quo. Stand by your legacy to welcome everyone, give choices to everyone, improve safety for everyone, and support this vital project. Thank you very much. Hello. Um, I love North Kansas City, by the way. Um, my name is Annette Talbot. I live on 30th and Swift. Um, my husband prepared this statement for me to read. So he wanted to make three points regarding the potential decision to tear out the roughly $700,000 project to add safe bike lanes and pedestrian bump outs to Armour Road. Uh, point one, my husband and I enjoy riding bikes, which is why we moved here instead of for example, Union Hill in Kansas City. For the past two and a half years, we have participated in road surveys, meetings with council members, and other initiatives to help North Kansas City reach its stated goal of being a metro-wide leader in commuter and leisure biking. Why would North Kansas City leadership throw away several years of planning, time, and effort because of anecdotal complaints? Although I, I do agree that some complaints are valid and some tweaking needs to be done. Um, two, basing the destruction of a project on um, exaggeration seems like what's happening because there are things like it took 15 minutes to drive down Armour Road and someone could get op hurt opening their car door. Um, we live here, so we drive up and down Armour Road. We bike up and down Armour Road. We also walk up and down Armour Road. So we have seen it busy all the time. Uh, you know, it's always busy during rush hour. That's never going to change. Um, we're, we're in support of this Complete Street project. Um, the third thing we were, we were concerned about, what do, um, what do small bu business owners who want to bring their business here think? Um, it has a potential to be a nice, successful retail and entertainment district. And if public money and grant funding are treated uh, with this kind of cavalier oh, let's rip it out, uh, it sends a message of somebody complains loudly enough and often enough, you, you're just going to be gone, regardless of what kind of agreements, what kind of planning, what kind of dollars went into a project. So we agree that tweaking needs to be done, but we don't uh, at all support just saying, get rid of it. So that is all. Thank you very much. I love it here. Love it. Hi there, my name is Brittany Libra and I'm also a resident. Um, for a long time, North Kansas City has been seen as a pass-through. 
as harsh as that might um, sound. Um, it's been seen by the broader Kansas City community as something you just drive through to get to an outer community, an outer suburb or downtown. Um, that's finally starting to change, and that's something that I'm personally really excited about. As a resident, I support projects like this one. It prioritizes residents and people who actually come to the businesses that are here and spend money there. Um, and I'd rather prioritize those individuals rather than people who are just trying to commute through the city as fast as they possibly can. Um, this is the kind of project that makes it nicer to live here and safer to live here. Um, and one of those things is slowing traffic down. So thank you for your work, and I hope you don't reverse this decision. Thank you. Good evening. Um, I'm Kathy West, and I'm a resident. Oops, can you? I'm so short. <laughs> All right. And, um, oh, gosh, and I'm really nervous about this. I'm really good if I'm in the front of 30 or 40 people behind, and I can yell at you, and I can tell you where to go and where not to go. And last night I had to tell somebody to get out of the street and get on the bike lane. Do you know how awesome that is? That is, that is amazingly awesome. And, and you know what? We came out here and we rode this road, and then we did something really cool that we've never done before. So we went down by um, the dog park, and we took a right. And we went up a lane, and that is our lane. Do you know what? It wasn't quite done. We had to do a hike bike to get around part of it, but it is our lane, and it's, it's our connection to the Northland. And we used this road right out in front. Obviously, I am, I am definitely in favor of, of the changes that have happened. I am a resident here. Um, I hear about, I live on 23rd. I hear about increased traffic. The only increased traffic I see is from the high school. And I mean, that's awesome, awesome increased traffic. Um, you know, we have a beautiful high school and people use it. And guess what? We're going to have people driving down our street. And we're going to have people parking on our street. And we're going to have people coming here. I don't understand why anybody would do anything to take away from that retail excitement that we have going on here in North Kansas City. And, and I'm, I'm going to be really short. I usually talk a lot, and I'm not going to do that tonight. I've been on a ride with you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I don't think I've been on a ride with anybody else here. I am a ride leader here in Kansas City. Um, I, I lead the rides from Thursday on Velo. Um, if you haven't ever been out, if you come out to a ride, for anybody who says that we don't have people who ride bikes here, our average is somewhere between 40 and 60 riders on a Thursday night. Our, our largest ride we did this year was 61. We ride 365, and we're really proud of that. It has gone so well that we all, we have three more rides. I lead four rides every week. Do you know how much I get paid for that? I get two beers. <laughs> hey, you guys are supposed to be quiet. <laughs> anyway, anyway, I would love to take you guys for a ride because you know what? This is our future, okay? Safety is our future. Riding is our future. Let's jump on that train, okay? Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Kathy, for putting the microphone down. My name is Camille Davis, not Camilla Davis. Um, I am a visitor. I drive 45 minutes to ride my bike up here. Um, the community is outstanding. I feel safe on these roads. Um, Kathy leads most of the rides that I ride on. Um, again, I'm going to take this really short because um, everyone has said what I believe. Um, what you have put into place, I wish Lee Summit, where I live, would do. We have a lot of space that we walk, and it's a great community, but we don't cycle downtown. And I think that's a shame. And I want you to believe that you've done the right thing up here, and I will continue to drive 45 minutes each way. Thank you. Hello, I want to thank you all for uh, providing this opportunity for the public to come and voice their concerns. 
Uh, as a homeowner in Ward 3, my name is Elise Carlson, I'm shocked by the response to the council and mayor's office. Surely a project that has involved four years of planning consulted experts to ensure public safety with regards to handicapped and parallel parking, as well as the feasibility of snowplow and first responder routes. I would expect this council to have anticipated a backlash to such dramatic changes of a highly used roadway and to have prepared to defend it with the same research used to justify the grants and public funding which implemented it. What's more, I expect this council would consider the impact to funding should you decide to throw away an investment of this size. I fear that such a knee-jerk reaction could jeopardize future projects in North Kansas City for years to come. Motorists do not top the list of intended benefactors for such a project. Pedestrians, cyclists, public transit riders, children, the elderly, and local businesses do. It has been a terrible miss by this administration that more was not done to ensure public buy-in or to aid commuters with the transition, but suggesting that we spend taxpayer money to throw away nearly three quarters of a million dollars is even more negligent and casts doubts in my mind as to the ability of this council to be entrusted with such budgetary decisions. I believe this project largely provides value to our community and with long-term implications that cannot yet be measured. I urge this council to allow time for adjustment and to consider modifying future phases as necessary with voter support. Hello, my name is Sheila Bruns. I'm a resident here. Rita, thanks so much for getting back with me on that email I sent you. Um, I think the love fest is going to end with me. Um, I've had a couple of months to figure out what you guys were thinking with this progress. I love bikers. I think it's great. Give us back a lane, put up a barrier, and let them have their bike lane. I no longer have a problem driving down Armour Road because I do not drive down Armour Road now. Now I use the avenues, as do a lot of my neighbors. So the 30 seconds, you're welcome because I now have thought of another issue that might be. There's kids that drive on the avenue. They bike ride on the avenue. How do I know that? I was one of those kids growing up here in North Kansas City. So you've protected a problem, but now you've created a problem because there are other drivers on the avenue. So I would encourage you to do research on the avenues. Where, the, where is the traffic being redirected? Because I do believe it is being redirected. I also want to know where the economic developer is in this. Um, because of the mop bucket, I mean, seriously, these people, this is their lives, and the fact that there's so much progress going on. What's happening down in the east is amazing. It's almost like you're ignoring the niche that we already have downtown, and all attention's going to be taken to the east. And I just think there needs to be a fair distribution of everything. On the outside, it looks like you're paying homage to the bikers. I know that it is beyond that. I know that safety is an issue. But the medians and the flower gardens and everything, to me, it's just not due diligence. And they keep bringing up the cost. That is on you for spending that money, you guys. Um, I think there should have been more tests. You have our attention now. You definitely do. I also think you should have had a bigger venue. You should have planned accordingly for people to come and to speak their minds, OK? I have been at hotbed topics in North Kansas City before where they've rented out a space. And I just wish there would have been more planning on that end as well because everybody else who's standing, I wonder if this was manipulative so they will leave and not speak their piece. That's all I have to say. I've been sitting for a while, so I'm a little hot-tempered. Thanks. My name is Kathleen Bergen. I have been a business owner in North Kansas City for um, since 2011. And um, I do not have a retail space, but I have been very concerned about driving by the mop bucket and to see the other locations that have um, limited access to their, their, their retail business and how that's impacting them. But my bigger concern for you and it should be really serious, is that I'm not personally right now a handicapped person or and need to have the accessible parking spots, but where they're located, oh my gosh. I daily, and my employees daily, make runs to the post office to mail off stuff, and it is crazy trying to get out of there. Um, and I am an able-bodied person trying to get out into traffic in between lights. I can go at 10 a.m., I can go at noon, I can go at 1 o'clock. It's dangerous. It's really dangerous. And to have the handicapped spots there, oh 
oh my goodness, that is so irresponsible. I, I can barely get out of the way if traffic is running really fast. These poor ladies, these poor gentlemen who have given so much to our community, how dare you not respect their safety? How dare you? That is very rude, and I am, was not raised like that. I grew up in North Kansas City. I went to North Kansas City High School. We moved our businesses down here. I love this community, but you do need some tweaks, seriously. <laughs> you do need some, some, some tweaks or you're going to be a laughing stock. That's all. Thank you. Hi, my name is Brock Traffis. I am a resident of North Kansas City, just behind here at a 2019 Fayette. And uh, I don't have much to say that doesn't echo the support already shown for the Complete Streets Project, um, other than we need to stop focusing on the anecdotal evidence that people who are saying tear it out are, are voicing. And if we're gonna listen to anecdotal evidence, then I wanna provide my own anecdotal evidence. I drive the corridor every day, morning rush hour, evening rush hour. I don't see any difference in the traffic pattern. I now, actually, apologies, I can guarantee you before those improvements went in, I was not driving the speed limit at some times. And now the entire flow of traffic is going the right speed. Everyone is obeying the posted speed limit. Everybody is paying attention to the pedestrians. People are paying attention to the cyclists. You hear people saying that you don't see the cyclists because they are behind the row of parked cars, but the way that the street is designed, designed by traffic engineers who know what they're doing, it makes you pay attention to these things. It makes you slow down, and it makes you appreciate your drive home, which I do that now. Hi, my name is Wade Elmore, I'm a resident. Uh, I'm not gonna take nearly my three minutes of time. Uh, I just wanted to say that my wife and I moved here about two and a half years ago. Uh, we specifically sought out this community based on what we understood the master plan to be. Uh, we thought it was a forward-looking community, that it was planning for the future, that we were gonna be raising our children here, um, and that we would have a community that would support them walking and biking uh, to local businesses, to school, uh, throughout the community. Um, super excited to see the complete streets go in, uh, very excited to get my bike on it, um, shocked at the response that people were talking about tearing it out almost immediately after it was not even completed, actually, the, the talk began before. Um, <coughs> it's, it's really, truly shocking that, that it would take such a huge step backwards after trying to get uh, such a forward momentum started. Um, and my wife and I had no ties to any part of the city, and we sought this community out as a place we want to raise our family. I do notice the traffic calming uh, between my neighborhood and Mackin Park. Uh, the bollards there have made a huge difference. Walking the kids across those crosswalks has become much more comfortable. Uh, and I also think that the same pedestrian crossing, slowing of traffic across Armour has made a big difference. Um, so I really appreciate the project, and I hope that you don't tear it out. If tweaks are necessary, tweaks are necessary, but I think the idea of tearing it out um, is just, it's just shocking. That's all. Hello, everyone. I'm Heather LeCure. Um, I'm a homeowner in Ward 3, 1210 East 21st Avenue, and I support the Armour Road Complete Street Project. Um, as a resident and a casual bicyclist, I enjoy the bike lanes on Armour Road. I like taking them down to River Market. Um, I enjoy the pedestrian refuges. I like walking around in our, our newly improved spaces. And I, I enjoy the slower traffic. Um, truly, I thought this project was impressive and incredibly forward thinking. And it's amenities like this why my husband and I decided to, we sought out and we moved to this community back in 2016. Um, Sure, as with any project, there could be some additional considerations, tweaks, improvements, 
but I'd rather see the same thorough, thoughtful, and data-driven processes that were used to install this project also used to improve it moving forward. Um, I think it's a hasty and an impulsive decision to undo any project less than two weeks since its final completion, and really before any other road changes are completed, like the QT intersection change, um, please consider my position. I don't want to see progress lost when you know we could work together to improve it instead. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mark Scrivener. I would love to say I'm a resident. However, uh, last year when I decided to move up to this area and began to shop for a home, I found out how hard it was to find that home in this area. Real estate agents told me right away, oh, that's a very desirable place. My reason for moving here in my retirement was the fact that I liked what North Kansas City was doing. The bikeability, the walkability, it's a special and unique area. We live in a major metropolitan area and we have all the advantages, an international airport, sports teams, all the opportunities you get in a metropolitan area, but yet it has a special and unique charm like a small town. Uh, again, I really support this project. Uh, it does need some tweaks, but let's let the concrete cure and press on with this vision that has made North Kansas City so desirable. Um, one last note, I know public service is hard. Sometimes it's a thankless job, so I'm glad to see several people, as well as myself, want to thank you for this. Hi, um, my name is Lori Brown. Um, I guess I'm not a resident. I am a visitor. I live, I guess, just outside of the city limits. Um, I was asked by uh, Bike Walk Kansas City to come speak, and um, the reason for that is because uh, my son Anthony was an avid bike rider. He rode his bike everywhere. He didn't care what time of day or night it was. He rode everywhere. And uh, he called me one day and he said, he said, hi, Mom, how you doing? I, I was living in Lawrence at the time, and he was living uh, just off of Independence Avenue. <coughs> and he said, Mom, how you doing? And I said, I'm fine. He said, you want to meet halfway tomorrow after, after I get off work and we'll go get something to eat? And I said, sure. And we talked for a little while, and... and um, he said, well, I got to go. He said, I'm going to meet some friends at the city market, and we're going to watch the Royals home opener because it was the night of the Royals home opener. And I said, okay. And the last thing I said to him was, all right, I'll, I'll talk to you later. Love you, son. And he said, love you too, Mom. See you tomorrow. An hour later, um, he was riding his bike down Independence Avenue, and a person coming towards him the opposite direction, driving so fast, hit my son, threw him 20 feet in the air, and broke every bone in my son's body. And my son landed on his face. I was not even allowed to identify my son's body when we went to the morgue, the city morgue. Um, this guy was going down Independence Avenue so fast that before he hit my son, he sheared two wooden telephone poles off at the base and uh, a bus stop pole. My son's face was unrecognizable, and they would not allow me to see him. This is what he looked like before he died. My son deserved to live past 32 years of age. And I believe that what you have done in this community is awesome and deserves to stay. Now, I'm not saying that it would have helped my son in any way, but I believe that 
if it saves one person. So sorry. It's time. It just, we deserve that chance. One Thank person. you. Thank you. Chuck Shealy, I'm a resident of North Kansas City. I want to tell you all the things they've they're not done on this, this thing. Gonna cost us a lot of money, and I, I don't think it's going to give us the that kind of balance we should have in the. In the so thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Simon Shekels. I am a uh, resident and homeowner on 23rd Avenue. Uh, as some of you may know, uh, that is the only two-way street on Ward 3. So. It is a street that would probably be pretty popular if there were a lot of traffic being diverged off of Armour Road for that. I can just tell you anecdotally myself, I have not seen that. But I'd just like to say that I take the 233 bus from work downtown every single day. I cross Armour Road as a pedestrian at the field outside of the YMCA every single day. I've been in favor of these changes during the proposal phase all the way through completion and understand that there needs to be after project assess assessments to properly gauge the results of this kind of change. As expected, with a project of this magnitude, it's been a jarring undertaking. A polarizing response should have been expected, and proper time to assess the ramifications should have been planned out. Entertaining the idea of not seeing this through at this juncture is comically irresponsible. Is there even consideration right now for the imminent quick trip move? After quick trip moves, it will lower congestion at Armour and Knox, making the effects on motor traffic less painful than ever before. It will also increase the number of pedestrians crossing Armour Road every single day making the changes effect on pedestrian safety more necessary than ever before. I find the prudence now versus the early stages of this project particularly noteworthy. This project was originally slated to be built, implemented, last fall. Due to a short time constraints and the inability to find a reasonable bid in such a fast turnaround time, it was decided that we would wait until after winter to implement the change. I spent this past winter carefully hurrying across the road, as I always do, where motorists regularly ignore traffic lights and do 40 plus miles per hour waiting for this project to make Armour Road safer for pedestrians, for this project to curb the speeding problem on Armour Road, for this project to encourage the travelers who actually stop here and spend money here. We waited through the winter for this project for a more responsible time for construction. Now we are holding this session 17 days after completion of the project, the stated purpose being to potentially remove this improvement or part of this improvement before winter? Why did it take so long to implement these changes, but now we're not even going to give them a proper amount of time for an objective assessment? I feel it's grossly irresponsible on the part of the council to even attempt to remove parts of the project now and to take on public comment barely two weeks after completion of the project. In fact, I find it borderline dishonest. It was argued by some council members here that it was too soon to hold this session because emotions were high. I feel that those high emotions were something that the mayor wanted to capitalize on to push through his agenda of giving Armour Road back to the speeders and the people that just want to use our city as a cut through. Assessing the change in the assessing the change after a proper period when any necessary action can happen more responsibly, both logistically and financially, is the only viable course for the city council to take on this matter. Anything more immediate than that would be a blatant so disregard sorry. for what's best for the city. Thank you. Good evening, I'm Mindy Hart Davis, and um, I'm giving my personal and professional thoughts as a resident of North Kansas City, as an owner of three businesses here in North Kansas City. And while my thoughts and opinions may and likely don't reflect the official position of Snake Saturday, one of my clients, they are my thoughts as the publicist for that event. I spent the last couple of months contemplating the changes on armor, the good, the bad, the ugly, and the hopes. In actuality, we have two very separate issues here. The first is the bike lane. The second is traffic flow. 
The conversation quickly became an us versus them conversation. Cyclists versus motorists actually became cyclists versus everyone. Motorists, consumers, workers, business owners, residents, and so on. So let's start there. Not a single person that I have talked to, and that would be hundreds, disagrees with the necessity of bike lanes. Not all of them, however, agree on the degree of the necessity, but everyone sees the worth and the benefits. In fact, on any given weekday, if one were to observe Armour Road, one would see over the course of the week there are very few cyclists actually on Armour during the week. Um, this is more of a weekend situation. Um, just a few more collectively than would be on, on during the week. However, the validity of the bike, bike lane remains. To be clear, I'm an advocate for bike lanes. My husband was an avid cyclist before his knees were blown, and he would ride 300 miles a week. He put more on his car, on his bicycle than his car, and he was thrown 25 feet as well. What I want to do, um, I have a document in front of you that you can read through. We have lots and lots of issues, handicap accessibility with ramps to the handicapped spaces. A couple of things that we could do immediately that would help this situation right now while the council is contemplating what needs to be done. We could remove the center median in front of City Hall and up further by the post office. That would allow emergency vehicles to get up through that turn lane in the middle of the street, and even if there's traffic congestion going both ways. It's a quick, simple fix. The other one is law enforcement. I love our law enforcement here, but North Kansas City used to be known as the city you don't speed through. Today, 50 cars in front of my business go in in excess of 35 miles an hour at Faya and Armour. I counted them, I stopped counting at 50 because I had work to do. Law enforcement has to be present. They're going up the alleyways. I live on 21st Avenue. They're going up 21st. I affectionately call it the North Kansas City Speedway. And it has only gotten worse with this. They're not going to do it with law enforcement presence. So when we put up the signs and the speed limit um, trackers, they're, they're paying attention. So I implore you, take some time, read the document, and take a deep breath. You guys are doing a great job, and it deserves to have some time to settle. Hello, I'm Jesse Wheeler, resident of 2018 Fayette. Um, I'll be brief. Uh, at this point, I don't think I add much value other than to say I support the Complete Streets Project. Uh, we're a family of four. We got two kiddos, one six, one three. Uh, we walk avidly uh, Armour Road corridor YMCA. And we can feel like we get there halfway safely, where before it was, it was uh, a matter of taking your life in your own hands sometimes. But um, I'd say we support it. I would, I would urge patience. Uh, perhaps a little more data and caution before we do anything as extreme as ripping all the money spent back out. So that's it. Evening. Uh, my name is Kyle Miles. I live and work in North Kansas City. Um, I'm in support of these changes. I do think that some tweaks need to occur, but I don't think the best course of action is to make those decisions tonight. I think they need to be studied carefully. I've emailed you all. Um, you know how I feel. Um, I hope that my email came across as measured. It was nothing personal. I just think that emotions are clearly high as evidenced by the last city council meeting, and I don't think we're gonna make a, a viable decision based on heated emotions. Um, I'm invested in North Kansas City. I was recently appointed, as you all know, to the TIF Commission and IDA Board, mainly because I want to be a good steward of this city, and I think doing a complete 180 on this project would not be being good stewards of North Kansas City. Um, there's been some comments made around um, North Town being an industrial town and a thoroughfare. Um, part of what attracted my wife and I to move back down in North Kansas City was the fact that it was becoming a community again and not a commuter town just catering to industrial businesses. Um, my vote is to give um, the Armour Road Complete Streets project a little bit more time. The whole goal here was to extend our main street a little bit further east, not to have a four-lane highway straight through our downtown area. This is a couple week old project, as we all know, and I think tearing it out and doing a 180 at this point would be comical and a travesty. Um, I take armor daily, um, not just during rush hour in the mornings and evenings, but also to let my dogs out during the middle of the day. 
I know that traffic has been a little bit of a frustration. I've been in it, but I'm not here to promote making drastic changes based off some of those anecdotes. I think you need to give it time. Um, again, this council, as you all know, unanimously approved this change, and I realize that things may not come to fruition um, as they may have appeared on paper, but to that same token, I think you should give changes time and let people adjust appropriately. There were years of planning and lots of public input and workshops that took place here. I'm not gonna quote the figures again, but what does concern me are, is the $100,000 mark grant. I think that puts in severe jeopardy getting grants like that in future. I also think um, this would set a terrible precedent and it would be a great disservice to our city planners and other staff that spend a lot of time planning this project. I also am in favor of collecting data and making an informed decision. I don't think that making a decision tonight on a removal would be an informed move. I think it would be a drastic move. Um, I think there's also been a lot of information, uh, misinformation, excuse me. Um, firstly, I've heard a lot of people complain about the removal of southbound I-35. I think a lot of people are confusing the Quick Trip project with the Armour Complete, Complete Streets project. And ultimately, this is about traffic calming, not bikes versus cars. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, name's Underwood. I moved here in the spring. I grew up in southeast Kansas City in the 40s and uh, rode the bicycle all the time. Can't do that anymore. So I think we need to be protect the bicycle people. But... Um, I don't know, this is not, I think you need to think about this and make some changes because I've seen one bicyclist and he was right on the sidewalk past the post office. <clears throat> now I'm handicapped so I parked in front of the post office. I'm not so quick to get out of the car anymore so when I opened the door, a truck almost got me, a big semi, almost took the island to avoid hitting me. Uh, I know that supplies are going to remove all those little sticks you put up, so I'm not worried about those. Um, when they go through there, they'll all come off the street. But that'll pile the snow into the parking lanes, and, and there wasn't room for me to get out of the car as a handicapped person with that truck coming. But he avoided me. And that'll put all the snow into the parking spaces, so we won't have to worry about those uh, when the plows go through. and. The bicycle lanes will be full of snow, so who's going to pl who's going to shovel those? You know, um, I don't think it was. I think you need to think some more before you do anything else. But I think something else does have to be done. Um, it was different in the '40s. You know, we had 300 miles of streetcar. You know, we didn't. We had a lot of things were different. And uh, people, it is, I think this 30-second thing of slowdown is ridiculous. It isn't true. I've driven armor, and it takes you three to five minutes or more to get from one end of armor to the other, if you can get it in that fast. So I use 23rd Avenue, because armor is ridiculous. You can't get on, you can't get off, you can't get across. Just solid traffic all the time. So think about it, but you need to do something. Thank you. Yes, I'm Steve Hoover. I live on 31st Avenue for the past 14 years. I really can't add anything else to what has been said tonight that Miss Adams and Miss Boone and Mr. Dunn have already said, but I do, I will say this is the most ill thought out project I've ever seen in my life. You people don't care about businesses evidently. You're hurting the businesses down here and without their revenue, you don't get tax dollars. So whoever was on this project four years ago and, and voted to keep going with it, they should be terminated immediately. Thank you.
Hello, my name is Brad Hakes, and I am a business owner, and I also own several commercial properties here in North Kansas City over the last 30 plus years. This is an undue burden on commercial business. You have burdened commercial business by this. I believe in bicycling. I bicycled myself, but I would not take my grandchild on Armour Road. Uh, it's too dangerous. And uh, I, I agree that it wasn't thought through very well. They've already mentioned the handicapped space in the middle of the street. One of the first days that it, it lined up, um, there was an elderly gentleman that parked where he normally parked at the post office. And he was met by somebody at the post office, and they're trying to explain to him where he's supposed to go and that he was going to get a ticket. And he, I don't think he ever really understood what he was supposed to do. And uh, uh, that handicapped space, if, if nothing else, you got to move that. Someone's going to die out there. Um, the, the talk about the snow removal was one of the first things I thought. That, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to literally be on armor to watch the plow go through there because he's right. Those little sticks are going to go flying everywhere, and they're, where are they going to put the snow now? I mean, it's just it, it's going to be a big, big mess. Um, so my business is located on Swift Street, and... Um, I drive down Armour all the time, and I have yet to even see a single bike bicyclist during the day. So I think this is kind of a night thing. When I work late in my office, I see 15, 20 bikers come down Swift Street with no traffic and not having any problems. And I think they tie in down by the, the Heart of America Bridge. And, and uh, it seems like they're moving around great the way it is. Now, maybe we need to repaint some of these arrows and make it a little more predominantly, um, you know, more visible for everybody. But I, I just don't understand why we're complicating the parking and the safety. Uh, these parking spaces out in the middle of the lane are a true lawsuit waiting to happen. And uh, I just wish that we could find paths where it's safer, where we're not mixing cars and bike lanes, like maybe at the base of the levees or, or somewhere where no one's having to worry about cross traffic or someone opening the door and here comes a bicyclist up. or trying to walk across the lane. Let's rethink this thing. Good evening. My name is Sebastian Allen. I'm a happy visitor in North Kansas City. Every day. I'm so sorry, Alan's next. I'm so sorry. You're next after that, though. You're right next. You're on deck. <laughs> uh, Alan McFan, I'm a resident of 1035 East 21st Avenue. I see armor right out of my back window. I see armor right out of my back window all the time. There's no chaos happening in the streets. Um, some of the hyperbole I've seen tossed around. I have to be home at a specific time every day because his mom goes to work. I've never gotten home late because of traffic on Armour Road. I don't own a bike, but I run and walk. We go to the uh, YMCA all the time. Um, I can tell you this is benefit because people are paying more attention. I have to constantly dodge cars and crosswalks because they're not paying attention. I'm sorry you have to slow down and pay a little more attention, but there are those of us that don't drive on the road all the time. Um, we talk about all of our parks. We highlight all of our parks. I think the pedestrian traffic to those parks should be safe on all sides, including Armour. Armor is not a byway. It's not meant to be going 35 miles an hour. It's not meant for cars to be zooming around into right lane as soon as it opens. Um, we need to be patient. The quick trip hasn't even moved across the street yet. That will affect traffic. And the same patience that we're trying to encourage these drivers to now undergo, we need to have the same patience when we're considering this project as well. So we shouldn't be ripping it up. Tweaks, sure, there's been ideas tossed around tonight. Let's keep talking about those tweaks, but let's not rip this all out. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> Sebastian Allen, a visitor every day through North Kansas City, around North Kansas City, in North Kansas City. Um, 
I do work for Ava, as you probably can see on shirt. We move a lot of cars up and down Burlington and, um, and around Kansas City. And the street is called Armor Road. There's been a lot of money spent in the state to redo 210 Highway all the way down the end. You see all the stuff they did there. You see that North Kansas City growing on the, on the east side of I-35. You have the grand I-35 coming through North Kansas City. Um, you have one, no, you have two of the main bridges in Kansas City. You have the Paseo Bridge and the Harvard American Bridge. If people are feeling like that people are coming through here not looking, they just, they just aren't correct. Nobody's against bicycles, but they don't need two sides. An example of what's working is Burlington, the Harvard America Bridge. There is a bicycle lane there. It is segregated away from the automobile, and you only lose one lane on one side of the, of the, the highway or the bridge, and it works fine. Because you see these people riding these scooters that they put the credit card in, they're gonna be coming soon. And those guys are really wild. So if you, you need those people over there in the, in, the, in the area, just put the concrete barrier there. And then if you gotta shovel some snow, okay, you got some edge to shovel it to. Parking, I don't know, parking, the, the 45 degree parking down the main center, it works well. It does, by the time you get to the end of Armour, you already are down to one lane. But, but I don't know who, what's going on down at I-35. That they spent a lot of money. Traffic, as much traffic is going this direction as it's going east and west. And now to have, you have to go down and make a 90 degree turn to come this way off of 35 and they turn all that up. We waited so long for that to be a nice turning lane. That area was bad for a lot of years. So now when you get off of 35, which we have to, the I-29, the Purcell Bridge, it's a mess. Okay, so but you see that you guys are okay with developing on the east side of I-35, so you ought to be okay with the other side. But you just got to get everything in its proper place. We can't have we can't lose two lanes going both directions. Um, you can't have handicapped people parking on the middle. You can't have anybody parking in the middle. You cannot get out of your car to the street when you're parking a vehicle. You do not see these little tick marks that, that identify parking spaces. Those little poles down there, they're going to be ran over. Once you get into one, you're going to hit all of them. So what, are you going to damage people's cars? People talk about emergency vehicles. They can't get through. Where do you go when they come through? People are not going to bring kids. There's a lot of good side streets around here where the high school is that could be um, streets that bicycles to use, and they're only a block or two off the, off the pathway. They could come through across Burlington and have a, across Armour and have a place, place to go, but they don't have to interrupt the traffic flow. When, we're, when anybody's driving through North Kansas City, we see everything. We come back on our own time, and we spend money here. That's going to I'm sorry, happen. that's time. Hi, my name is Shelley Pinto. I'm a resident of North Kansas City. I've been here for 46 years. I'm also a business owner for 25. I drive up and down Armour Road every day. I have a warehouse on Atlantic Boulevard and I drive down Armour and I find it visually confu can very confusing and uninviting and um, I'm I'm for taking the bike lanes off of Armour Road. That's my opinion. Uh, good evening. Uh, my name is Byron Spencer. I'm a resident. I've been lived here in the city for 10 years, and I've worked here in the city for 20 years. Um, I'm a commuter. I drive through Armour Road every day. Um, I am support of the complete street plan. It is does add sometimes a, a little bit of time to my, my commute, but I think it's acceptable. Um, I run these streets. I'm an avid runner. I cross armor frequently, and I can tell you, if you go back to before these changes, I have two small children. If you've ever walked from Dag Park across the street with a stroller and a four-year-old to get an ice cream, it is not very safe when it's five lanes. I do think the, the reduced lane has calmed traffic, and I think it is supporting uh, pedestrian safety, which feels very, very important, um, and we need to keep pushing for that. A few of the reasons why we need to push for that, um, we've been way too car focused, and if you think about what's coming down the road here, we've got a lot of stuff happening on the south side of Armour. Uh, we've got a brand new food entertainment district opening, we've got a multi-million dollar children's museum opening over there, hotels, there's several residential projects in the works being planned. 
there's gonna be a lot more pedestrian traffic back and forth across Armour. That's why we need the slower speeds. That's why I think it's really more than a bike issue. It's more about pedestrian safety, and we get that with the slower speeds by reducing the number of lanes. Um, a few other things I wanted to think about. Um, really, this comes down to me for a, a safety versus convenience issue. And I'm gonna to try to think a little bit differently here. I've been watching a lot of city council meetings, and you know what my favorite part of the city council meeting is? The Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> it's everyone standing up as a group of leaders saying, you know, we pledge and, and we have a vision of what we wanna to do together. But the part of the, the Pledge of Allegiance that I really want you to think about is it ends with liberty and justice for all. So think for a minute about what justice for all looks like. It's not justice for some people who might own a car, who might be able to afford to have a car, who might not be able, you know, so there are people in our community who can't see to drive. We have an aging group of people that's gonna to continue to age. Eventually, they may want to have the mobility options to cross armor safely, um, and they're gonna to need to access things. So I ask you guys to think about that a little bit. I really want us to think about what works for all people. The, the complete street plan was written as, a, as trying to include everyone. And, and I think it really got to the idea of justice for all. So I do think we need to keep the changes and I think we need to work to make them better. Thank you. So, my name is Caitlin Bunce. I'm 14 year old, years old, and I go to North Kansas City High School. Not well talking in front of people. <laughs> <laughs> so, I rode my bike to school today. It was confusing. It's something that I love, though. <laughs> um, now, I had this whole thing like planned out. There's she's gonna read. Think about something you love, like something you love a lot. Now think about if that thing, whatever it was, we've taken away. That thing for cyclists is our bikes, and bike lanes give us the freedom to go as fast as we'd like, and the freedom not to worry about being hit. Now 53% of cyclists do worry about being hit, and 47% would ride if they had bike lanes. We worry because cars are faster than us and more protected than us and would do a lot of damage to us. <coughs> that is why we need bike lanes. Thank you. Good evening, I'm David Katz and I'm a resident and I live off of uh, 31st and, and how um, I've lived in North Kansas City for approximately 15 years. And for most of that time, our family hasn't owned a car. Our family of six uh, gets around town on foot, by bus, and by bike. Uh, one of the main reasons we moved to North Kansas City was due to the relative ease of getting around without a car. Still, large swaths of North Kansas City can be downright hostile to non-car travelers. I was thrilled to see the Armour Road Complete Street Project. Yes, I'm sure at peak times it can cause delays for car travelers. I think 30 seconds is, a, is acceptable. But for the first time since moving to North Kansas City, my, fa my family and I can traverse Armour Road without fearing death. I think I have the right to use the infrastructure I help pay for without fearing for my life. There are plenty of car-friendly Kansas City suburbs. North Kansas City has and should be different. And given the mounting imperative of climate change, it would be irresponsible to backtrack. Thank you for this opportunity to talk to you. Hi, my name is uh, Megan Katz. I'm a resident of North Kansas City. I live uh, right down the street, and I am 
in favor of these uh, new bike lanes that you guys have put on Armour Road. I think it really elevates uh, North Kansas City from a city that is based on cars driving almost anywhere and it really lets bike lists and pedestrians go where they would like to. Uh, my family does not own a car, so I bike, take the bus, and walk almost everywhere I go, and it makes me feel a lot safer to go on Armour Road, and I hope it stays that way. Thank you. Is Deborah Bowman in the lobby? Deborah Bowen going once. We'll move on to Drew. Good evening. Uh, my name is Drew Steele. I'm a resident. Uh, I also have the unique pleasure of having seen this project from a lot of different sides. Um, I've been to the many public meetings prior to that and prior to moving to North Kansas City. Um, I had the unique pleasure of voting for this project as a transportation planner at Mid-America Regional Council. To my recollection, it was one of the highest scoring projects of that year, and so it's been a pleasure to see it come to fruition. Um, in my previous capacity as a transportation planner in other cities, including Boulder, Colorado, uh, I can recall a similar project where a big bike lane went on a major road uh, to much public backlash. They ultimately removed the bike lane several weeks later, and the uh, business owners that were the loudest ended up closing shop and moving to a different town just a couple of months following that. And so I, I would request that the council do what's best for the city in the long term as opposed to what's best for a few squeaky wheels right now. Um, I would also add that um, as a transportation planner in Boulder, Colorado, uh, there are ways of cleaning snow out of bike lanes without damaging the bollards. I uh, would be happy to have a conversation about that. So thank you. I'm Carl Eschbacher. I'm a homeowner and resident in Northgate Village. And my activities take me around the entire metropolitan area. My activities take me all around the metropolitan area, so I have to tra go across Armour Road quite often. Um, and I've seen a lot of different traffic uh, challenges throughout uh, my years. Um, this is one of them. It's awkward. Uh, it was difficult and confusing at first, but so were traffic circles when they first came out. So were these diamond exchanges. We've learned to live with those, and most of the time those have turned out to be very good. I believe you need to tweak what you got and consider that and not brush into just tearing it out. It would be very irresponsible to do that. Tweak it, there's a variety of ways you can tweak it. I think one of the problems will be alleviated a little bit when Quick Trip moves. It also would have been nice if there was another exit off of I-35 other than Armour and then have them go all the way down, I believe, to Bedford. If there was another uh, off-ramp between Armour and Bedford, you could take some of that traffic that's on Armour and direct it elsewhere. I don't know if the highway department would help you do that, but that's another tweak maybe to consider. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is Sergey Vartanov. I'm resident, long time resident of Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, after I heard about uh, this meeting, I decided to give my input. Uh, the first of all, well, yes, I'm not a delegate, but I address to the chairman to make a motion to extend the time for speakers uh, up to 10 minutes uh, for the next public meeting. Three minutes is not enough. If someone can finish within 30 seconds, that's fine, but three minutes definitely, for some people at least, is not enough when it comes to something important topic like this. This is for the second. Um, 
This research we heard earlier at the beginning, before the meeting, uh, it's very really questionable to me, and we should look into that. Who sponsored, who made it, how made it, how all this time was counted, it's a big question. Uh, the next, uh, we all familiar, I hope, at least those who walk, cycling, and drive the cars, uh, familiar with Missouri traffic law. So that traffic law is equally written for all participants. And I see personally is a certain group, cyclists, they campaign and someone stayed behind that movement um, to grab literally the privilege and cut the piece from the main road. There is no justification for that. The first, there is no safety measure in it. There is no life guarantee. Uh, life is not guaranteed to anybody at all. We can die tomorrow getting in the car or across the road. So it's a wasting of the time. You know, uh, the, all uh, people who are in favor of it, including you all council members who decided to sponsor this project, you should pay to redo all this and return to our original condition and pay out of your pocket until this project is finished. And you will be working here as a volunteer, your public servant. Then next, it is United Nations agenda. Does anybody know in this room uh, where that come from? On the green agenda, climate control, reducing CO2 emissions. Uh, the ultimately long-term uh, goal is to get us out of the vehicles. We have in multiple uh, um, transitioning um, stage <laughs> and uh, creating separate bicycle lanes as a privilege for certain group is one of the many stages we do. And it happens not only so in North Kansas City, in Kansas elapsed. City. I'm it's so sorry, your wide. time has elapsed. Yep. And the last time check, www.technocracy.news. Get educated before you make decisions. Good evening, Mayor and Council. My name is Kurt Austin. I live near North Kansas City Hospital. I'll be at about a third of a mile outside of the city limits for North Kansas City. Uh, my daughter is a student in the school district here. I volunteer at the YMCA. I frequent North Kansas City businesses. Our family loves the parks. They love the library. Suffice to say, if this is the most controversial issue for North Kansas City, I think you should all take pride in realizing how good of shape this city is in. I echo many of the comments this council has heard tonight in favor of the Armour Road Complete Street improvements. The project has made Armour Road significantly safer for all users of all ages and all abilities. It's pushed North Kansas City forward as a more welcoming destination, particularly for pedestrians, cyclists, and public transit riders. As Drew mentioned just a little bit ago, there's a reason that the Mid-America Regional Council rated this the best project for its class, above 15 other plans produced by competing cities across the metro. While I share many of the concerns about the haste with which this three-year project is being prematurely tried and sentenced just two weeks after the completion of the construction, not to mention what a tragic waste of the $600,000 that were invested into this project would be, I would like to use my time tonight to encourage you to consider this from a different perspective, that of public health. North Kansas City Hospital and the Northland Health Alliance recently gathered data about the most serious health issues impacting citizens in this part of the metropolitan area. I'd like to share some of the staggering statistics from the Community Health Needs Assessment to inform tonight's discussion and future policy discussions. First, two-thirds of the Northland population is overweight or obese. Second, there are 958 zip codes throughout the state of Missouri. This zip code, 64116, ranked 893rd in the state in obesity. 64117 on the eastern edge of North Kansas City ranked 913th. Both zip codes saw the life expectancy of their residents decrease from 2006 to 2016. And finally, lack of exercise was identified as the top health behavior having the greatest impact on the overall health of our community. As a result, North Kansas City Hospital's number one initiative for the next three years is to increase exercise to help reduce obesity in the Northland. That matches up nicely with North Kansas City's master plan, which outlined a vision to promote walking, biking, and physical activity, among other endeavors. The Armour Road Complete Street project is a momentous step forward toward achieving those goals. The improvements significantly increase the likelihood of people biking, walking, running, and exercising. 
This infrastructure can change behaviors and lifestyles and ultimately health outcomes. Thank you to the council for your public service and to the city staff for their critical contributions to our community. I'd very much like to see North Kansas City continue to progress forward, not backward, to the benefit of our businesses, residents, and visitors. Thank you. Hello. Um, my name is Carolyn Mason. Oh, thank you, dear. Short. Uh, my name is Carolyn Mason, and I'm a resident of North Kansas City. I moved to the area about three years ago, and one of the things that attracted me to this area is because it seems so forward-thinking. I think the Armour Road um, project um, um, is great, um, and I hope that before we decide to or the council decides to um, eliminate it that we give it some time to um, we give it some time uh, I know I walk with a friend every morning at Mackin Park and I've got to tell you I absolutely love the crosswalks so many times when and we walk like 5 36 o'clock before work and uh, so many times you know we would stand there and think oh my gosh is that car gonna stop and now they with the with the sticks and with the stop signs, they actually see us. So, um, like I said, um, I hope we give the time, give the project some time to uh, be accepted. Thank you. It's Dorothy Messiason. Dorothy Macias, last call. Greg Miller. Greg Miller, last call. Bruce Richard. Thank you for speak, letting me speak today. Um, what I'm against is I had an incident where I, it could be any one of us, you, me, needs an ambulance and needs to get North Kansas City Hospital very quick. I had an incident where I saw the ambulance coming towards me, so and I had a green light, and I had everybody mad at me because I stopped, and they were honking and raising cane, and I saw the ambulance ahead of time because so, they're going to have to whip around in front of me to get onto the hospital. And this is a serious thing. I've seen it more than once. And we need it somehow using television, may the government educate people. When someone stops, may they're stopping for a reason and listen for those ambulances. I always try to listen and stop. And I've seen so many incidents, and right here in Northtown, not, you know, and Kansas, I live in Kansas City. I own a house there. I try to get in here, but I come down here, I spend a lot of money. I'm in Northtown a lot. And that is a major problem I see in. We all need to address it somehow to, you know, let people know that someone stopped. You know, it was a green light, and they were mad at me, but I was doing it for a reason. I saw the ambulance coming and had to get to the hospital. You know, it could be life is precious. And, you know, could any one of us need the ambulance service to get to the hospital to save our life? And we need to review that and find a way. Because I couldn't pull over, so I just blocked the traffic and let him whip in front of me. Thank you for all my time, your time. Laura Ellers. Thank you for listening to me tonight. Uh, I've got several different things. I do not believe the bike lane should be where the traffic is because the bikes do cut out in front of the cars. And then, and then if, if we hit them, guess who's going to get banged? It's not going to be the biker for doing it. It's going to be the car for hitting them. But the biker pulls out in front of you, what are you going to do? 
You're not going to be able to just stop on a dime. Especially if he just pulls right straight out in front of you. So I do not believe they belong along Armour Road at all. And take out that parallel parking. I do not believe that it belongs there either. Because like uh, the man before me, Bruce Richard, he, when he said that uh, you had an emergency vehicle, where are you supposed to go? You have, a, you have one of those um, islands on one side and a car on the other side of you. Where are you supposed to go? It's very simple. Thank you for listening. Hello, my name is Nancy Fish. I am a resident of Kansas City, Missouri, but more than three times a week, I come over the bridge into North Kansas City to ride my bike. I ride my bike in North Kansas City because I'm safe on the streets, not like in Kansas City. In the three years since I've been riding my bike, the biking community has grown tremendously in North Kansas City. Instead of spending my money in Kansas City, Myself, along with hundreds of other cyclists from surrounding cities, spend their money at local restaurants, bars, and coffee shops in the local North Kansas City shops. It's, we come here because it is safe and it is a bike-friendly community. Thank you. Hi, I'm Karen Jones. I'm a visitor here to express my support for the Complete Streets Project. I live in Prairie Village and I work in Kansas City. I choose multiple days a week to visit North Kansas City. If you want data on that, you can check with Kylie Sutter at Velo Garage. He knows my bar bill. I choose North Kansas City precisely because of the community of cyclists that has grown here and the welcoming businesses that are here. The Complete Streets Project is a forward-thinking, physical manifestation of that welcoming environment. There are not enough words. I cannot tell you how transformative my experience cycling and being in North Kansas City has been to me personally in terms of my health and many other ways, but I digress. Um, I cannot express my gratitude to you and North Kansas City enough for creating a safe and welcoming place for all, no matter how they're getting around. I urge cool heads to prevail. I'm sure that a compromise can be reached to maintain this important asset for everyone. Thank you for your time. Good evening. My name's Thank you. My name is Treadwell Jones. I am an avid cyclist. I'm a visitor. Um, I'm also reminded that politics is local and it's also a contact sport. And right now I'd say it's a marathon. So here we are. That said, um, I'm absolutely in favor of the Complete Streets Project. I love talking about cycling, but I, I really think the focus for me in just looking at the analysis of what it is from a design perspective is this is really about traffic calming. And, and then creating a pedestrian environment where there really wasn't one. And we're all visionaries here. That's why you're in politics, because you have a vision. I have visions as well. But if you, if you look at the, just what you're doing at that corridor from Lynn to Fayette, you're eliminating, you're eliminating two lanes. But let's be honest, it also shut down at Fayette. So you already had a two-lane road anyway. So it's not like traffic throughput is going to be it, it is lost. It's, it's always been there. It's just now it's the same way it was on a main street. And you are creating a main street, and that's what you want. Because what you ultimately want to do is create places for people to put businesses that are forward-facing storefronts that then become another part of your community that you have, multi-use, et cetera, et cetera. I've heard people talk about not being able to find, find housing in this part of the world. It's true. There's not enough. You have the quaintest community around. You have assets that other communities would love to have. And, you know, what this Complete Streets project does for you is help f facilitate that. Um, <clears throat> that said, uh, you know, you've 
this, this system, this whole process, how we got here, didn't happen in a vacuum. And it was actually, I think you guys all agree, it was a well thought out process. We're talking about tweaking it or we're talking about tearing it out. I am not in favor of tearing it out. I think that you need to take a hold of your future and understand what you've got and help augment that, augmentate that. Thank you very much. Cindy Martin. Last call for Cindy Martin. Zach Flanders. Good evening. My name is Zach Flanders. I'm a visitor to North Kansas City. Uh, I live in Kansas City, Kansas, and I work in downtown Kansas City, Missouri, just across the river. So I come to uh, North Kansas City often for lunch or do other errands. And it's just a wonderful city you have here. Um, I ride my bicycle to work. I wanted to share a little bit about how bicycling has benefited my family. Um, we, I, my, my wife and I have two kids, and we were able to get by with just one car uh, because we chose where to live based on where we could bike and ride, our bu ride the bus to our workplaces. And I take my son uh, to preschool on the bike, and it's the favorite part of the day. His face lights up when he gets on the back of the bike, and it's really, truly wonderful. Um, my biggest concern is safety. I, it's a worry that I have uh, bicycling around uh, the Kansas City region. And I can tell you, when I ride uh, North Kansas City bike lanes on Armour Road, I feel safe. Um, I use the bike lanes to go to lunch, to run errands, and I can tell you that the difference between before and after is like night and day. Um, so I just encourage you to think about families and safety and people who choose to use bikes to get around. Um, I'm able to save thousands of dollars a year by just having one car. If you think about all the car payments and insurance and everything else that goes into car ownership, it's a big benefit for my family. And there's lots of other families like mine out there who are, you know, don't have a car, or just have one car, you know, or maybe they only have two cars when they have kids that are driving age. Um, but it's a big benefit, and I just hope that you think about uh, what that could do to a family that if they don't have a safe place to drive or to bike, um, I, I just ask you that you don't take away this safe street from us. Thank you. Hello. My name is Kaylee. I'm a resident of North Kansas City. I've worked here for a while as well, spent a lot of time here. Um, hold on, sorry. I'm quite frankly pretty upset uh, with the representation of my specific ward council members. I live in Ward 3, um, as well as the mayor, especially because it's come to my attention that a motion was already placed in front of the council members to pull back one of the lanes and make Armour Road two streets again prior to the public comments, which I would say is kind of a jumping the gun a little, considering, granted I haven't been keeping track, but it seems like most of the people here are in support of, at the very least, giving more time to this project. Uh, when we found out that this was actually being considered a mere 17 days after the project was completed, a few residents, uh, seven or eight of us total, all most of us living in Ward 3, got together and decided to collect signatures, walk around our streets, talk directly to our neighbors, our business owners, uh, and see get honest feedback. Don't disagree, or if you disagree, that's great. If you agree, tell us why. We weren't looking for one way or another. We were looking for honest feedback and an honest discussion. Um, I think, quite frankly, it would be a misuse of time, money, a gross injustice to waste $680,000 and years of planning to rip it out in a mere 17 days. Now, I'm not here to say that the project is perfect, but I am here to say that it hasn't had near enough time to actually see the changes that it does have to offer this community. Uh, I've worked at Armour starting in 2013. I've seen this community grow crazy in the last six years, and it's been super exciting, and it's been awesome to be a part of that community, to befriend everyone, to get to know everyone, to walk the streets, to ride the streets, to drive down Armour. I drive down Armour every single day. I live on 22nd Avenue. Um, I'm just honestly shocked, and this is the first time I haven't been proud of my city. I've been greatly let down by the representation of you guys to move so hastily to get rid of such a large project with so much time put into it. 
That's all I have to say. Thank you. Stan Masters. Last call for Stan Masters. Andrew Killen. Last call for Andrew Killen. Tony Libra. Hi, my name is Tony Libra, and uh, I am 100% in favor of this project. I am a resident of North Kansas City. I'm also the general contractor that is uh, currently building out Northgate Village. Uh, I may be one of the few people that uh, have used each one of the parts of this project. Uh, I drive up and down Armour several times a day, and I have never seen any problem. In fact, I think the, uh, the traffic has slowed down. Uh, the parking spaces that are along Armour, uh, I actually look forward to using them because they're always available. Uh, when I come to City Hall now, I can, I can zip in and I can zip out. Uh, same with the post office. Uh, you have to keep your wits about you, but you know it, it works well. Uh, now you've created a bike lane. Uh, I love to bicycle. Uh, I feel safe now on the bicycle lane. Uh, I walk my daughter's dog all over this town, and you've got a sidewalk now that's uh, separated from the vehicles that I feel much safer. Uh, I've lived here four years, and uh, what you guys have done with this city is just fantastic, and uh, I should have moved here years ago. Just want to thank all of you for all the hard work that you do. I'm 100% for this project. Hello there. Thank you. Uh, Dave Wood, proud Ward 1 resident here. Um, I'm going to be very brief. Everybody stole all my thunder. Um, but you guys, uh, uh, honestly, a lot of folks have stated uh, exactly how I feel. Uh, I've been in support of this project since day one. I'm, I'm also serving on the planning commission, so I've been involved in a lot of the uh, information right from the get-go. And I will tell you, as I travel you know, domestically for my job, uh, I see a lot of communities doing this. And I talk to those folks, right? It's not all you know, pretty roses, but they all, at the end of the day, say, you know what, this was needed because the cars are not gonna go away, right? That's a given. But Somebody said it earlier, it's, it's an opportunity and we have to understand that the vehicle traffic nowadays has to share the road. Uh, someone mentioned about you know, lack of housing and the city's been addressing that. There's a lot of new uh, housing projects going on right now, right? So that's a good thing. When we attract those new people to move here, guess what they want? They want choices. If they want to drive, they can drive. If they want to ride their bike, they can ride their bike. That's what they're asking for. I haven't heard any bicyclist stand up here and say, get rid of the cars, but I've heard a lot of it the other way. It's unfortunate that it came down to, you know, cars versus bikes. I don't think that's what it's about. I think it's about a choice, and a lot more people have said it more eloquently than I am right now, but I'm just urging you, and I'm hopeful that you'll stay the course and let this thing go and see what it will really do. Just see what it will really do. So let's keep it going. Thanks. David Hansen. Last call for David Hansen. Everett Fraker. Oh, can you hear me? Uh, my name's Everett Fraker. I've lived here for about 35 years. I am handicapped, and I'm telling you that when you park in any of those lanes, you have to open your car door out into traffic where you're going to lose your arm or your door or open the door on the other side where you're going to hit a bicyclist. Now, I've heard a lot of this stuff, but nobody's seeming like they have any common sense. Why do we have to have the bike lane on one of the busiest streets in town? 
North Kansas City, everybody should know, is flat. You can drive your bicycle from here over to the airport and have plenty of miles if you want to drive that far. The only hump you got is a few railroad tracks to go over. I don't understand why people think that that's the only place you can have a bicycle trail in North Kansas City. There's plenty of other routes that you could take besides taking up three lanes on a busy road, putting in a few parking spots that are very dangerous. I don't know if that one lady was right about the, the law, but I know as a handicapped person, you cannot just open up the, you're opening up your door into traffic, they can't see you opening up the door, and you can't necessarily see them. You got, you had three lanes where you could have the fire department, the police department, the ambulance, the post office, vans, cars, tr big trucks. If you dri drive a dually down the road, you can't hardly make any turns. You can't hardly get in and out of the mailbox where you want to put the mailbox into the post office. It's, if you, you, have a, you have to have a small car to do it. You have a big dually or a big truck, forget it. You're going to hit something and knock it off. I don't understand why people don't have enough common sense not to put the main bicycle trail on a busy, busy street when you have all the other options on a flat area. I'm done. Jane Quick. Hi, my name is Jane Quick, and I live in North Kansas City. Um, unlike some of the people, I want to commend you for having this meeting. I think that when people see master plans and things on paper, to equate it to how it's going to look in real life isn't always the same. I can't do that. I can't look at something and really visualize what it's going to look like. So here we are, and you've got this piece that everybody is upset about. Um, it's a, it, there, it, 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 you had lots of other meetings, however, it was still on paper and it wasn't alive. Um, it's now alive. I am, after listening to everybody, I learned a lot, actually. Um, I was totally against it and now actually I'm not. But I, I, I would love to see the bike lanes remain. I think that is our future. I think a lot of people love to ride bikes, and it would be wonderful just having a bike lane all around the city and even it, to the market and across, et cetera. However, the other 50%, I think, is terribly dangerous. Um, you're talking about good health and riding bikes and all this good stuff. Well, I almost had a heart attack just trying to get out of the first federal bank because the traffic and nobody would stop because everybody's in a hurry and now it's down to one lane. Um, I've, coming out of the Y, I've seen people making that right-hand turn over that, what are the, what, I don't know what you're calling it, but it's an island to me, and their car is going through. So it's my suggestion that um, after this, that everybody go back and reevaluate what you're going to do because this is a plan going all the way down Armour and this is a plan going to Burlington. So if you're having the trouble that you're having now, I can't imagine what it will be like in months to come. So I thank you for having this, but I so encourage change and change for, I would love to hear about the medical vehicles and, and the firefighters and what their feeling is. Um, the mop bucket, their business is, is, has been cut because of it. And that's the last thing I know that you all want is for less people coming to our businesses and restaurants. So compromise is the answer, <laughs> but, um, but I have a new appreciation for the bike lane, so thank you.
Good evening. I'm Sandy Skeggs, and I've always lived within a couple of miles of North Kansas City and actually lived in Northtown for some time and went to the high school here. Um, I know several people in the audience tonight that have not spoken, and I'm, I'm pretty certain that they would agree with me that Armour Road is a mess. So um, I, this past week, and I know some people have cast aspersions on, um, on anecdotal stories, but I, this past week, have been to church, I've been to CVS, I've been to the Y, and it seems like there's one other place. Oh, the post office. And every single place I went, somebody was complaining about what's happened on Arbor Road. So I'm kind of with Jane. I learned a lot tonight, and I appreciate the bicycling and, and looking toward the future. Um, as I was sitting there, I was thinking, this is what democracy looks like, really. And everybody's been very civil. We have a lot of different opinions. Um, perhaps this needs to go to a vote. Maybe, have you ever thought of maybe putting together something for a special election? I don't know. You're the ones to make the decision. And um, I hope that, that you do it well. I'm sure you will. Thank you. <coughs> Uh, good evening. Um, my name is uh, Nathan Janes. I'm a uh, what, I'm what you would classify as a visitor for the most part. I uh, I don't live in North Kansas City, but I do frequent North Kansas City a lot. I used to love going down Armour Road, um, both as a commuter um, in a car and walking. Um, walking I still enjoy, but going down in the car I don't. Um, I do most of my shopping in a car. And I don't feel safe driving when there is emergency vehicles. I had to pull into one of those parking spaces to avoid being hit by an officer going down the road. I've had to um, turn off of armor to avoid being hit by people who are confused about what's what. Um, it's kind of hard to tell. There are places where there aren't those little sticks that everybody keeps talking about. I'm also concerned about the uh, about the parking spaces. Um, I have many friends who live near and around the area, who frequent the area, who are handy um, capped or limited mobility. And I, I am afraid that they are gonna get hit. I wouldn't personally use them and I'm able-bodied. I, I, I could jump out of the way if a car decided not to see me or couldn't see me. And I'm afraid for the people who can't do that. Um, I'm not against the bike lanes. I, th I think they're a great idea. Um, for people who like to bike, who like to travel that way, it's great. I used to be a biker. I used to love it. Um, my knees won't really allow me to do that anymore, unfortunately. Um, but I'm not against the idea of the bike lane. I just think that maybe there was a better way to implement this. And the parking spaces, I just think, are um, a danger waiting to happen. Um, yes, there's plenty of pedestrian traffic. That That's true. And yes, it does need to be safe. It needs to be safe for everybody. That includes drivers, too. Um, it's not an us versus them thing. I, I don't think that at all. I think it's that there, are, there is a possibly a better way that this could all be done. Um, I don't know what that is. I'm not a city planner. But I do think there, was, there could be some middle ground found that would make this safer for everybody. Thank you. Pete Cowden. Last call for Pete Cowden. Bennett Dibbon. Bennett Dibbon.
I answer to anything, and I don't write very well because my last name is Reynolds. Um, my first name is Risa, but it's spelled correctly there. Um, I am, uh, my husband and I purchased a home in North Kansas City this summer after renting for a couple years and falling in love with North Kansas City. Um, it took us almost a year to buy a house. We placed multiple offers. I'm pretty sure I looked at every house that went on the market during that year because I wanted to live in North Kansas City and I wasn't going to settle for anything else. So finally, this summer, we found a house that we paid too much for <laughs> and we are very happy there. Um, one of the reasons we wanted to live here is we see this as a progressive city with small town charm. And I got to tell you, my biggest concern is not with whether or not the Complete Street Project is a good one. Um, I haven't made a decision yet. I'm still scared to try the bike lanes, to be honest, because the drivers, are, and myself included, are still learning what lanes to drive in. Um, I think the traffic patterns are going to change a lot when Quick Trip moves across the street, so I think it's too soon to really tell what the full effect is going to be. So I'm on the fence. But I was very alarmed when I watched the city council meeting from last time. And two days after the delineators were put in, there was talk about tearing out the whole project. I got to tell you, it made me scared as a homeowner. I need those property values to go up. I already told you I paid too much for my house. <laughs> I can't have values go down by living in a city where the council takes years to do a project and then turns around and undoes it in a matter of days. That scares me to death as a homeowner. You are stewards of our money, our city, our image. I mean, the ball is in your court. We put a lot of trust in you. And I would like to think that you would take time to consider this project, allow people to get used to the project. Um, it is way too soon to make a determination as to whether or not this is a total fail or just needs tweaks or it's great as is. I don't know which one that is, but I do know that now is not the time to make that decision. Thank you. Chris Payne. Last call for Chris Payne. <clears throat> Nico Ya Helm. Last call for Nico Ya Helm. Hello, Mr. Mayor, Council Members. I'm Eric Rogers with Bike Walk KC. Uh, first, I wanted to thank you for spending all of your evening here uh, listening to all of us. Uh, I know it's probably not what you want to be doing, but I appreciate your service. I also wanted to thank the city staff, who I know put a lot of time and effort and hard work into producing the plan and all the other great plans that are happening here in North Kansas City. Um, I wanted to touch on, I think, something that's getting lost in this uh, talk of bikes versus cars, and that's all of the other folks, the pedestrians, uh, the kids who are out walking, uh, the folks who maybe are blind or in a wheelchair and have to get to the bus stop so that they can get to work or to a doctor's appointment. Um, and I wanted to make sure we're reminded that those folks also matter and that those folks uh, need to be included as you're making your deliberations and your decisions. Um, you know, there's been a couple of references to petitions. I know there were some business owners who organized a petition, and I think they said they got a couple hundred folks. Um, we heard that um, some residents organized another petition. Last I heard, they're up to almost 700 people, and I'm sure they'll be uh, delivering those to you this week so that you could consider them. I want to make sure that those folks as well are, are receiving a fair representation and are having their voices heard. And finally, I just want to ask that as you go forward and make your decisions, that you're really looking at the data and the evidence and that that takes some time uh, to collect the information. Um, is it really making cars faster or slower? Is it really making people safer? Um, I 
can tell you around the city and around the country, that's almost always the case, but you need to collect your own data here in North Kansas City and make a decision based on that data. So I would ask that you please uh, give this project some time to mature, let um, staff uh, tweak it and make improvements based on community feedback. And then, um, you know, after the new year, after we've maybe had another summer to really see how it works, uh, then make your decision. Thank you for your time. Hello, Mayor, Mayor Stilo and the council. Thank you for holding this. Um, I've been a resident of uh, North Kansas City for over 30 years, and I own a home in Ward 4. Uh, I think it is a traffic issue with a lot of people. Uh, I understand that we all need to exercise more, and we need to... Um, uh, you know, it's probably, you know, some of the cross, crosswalks, <clears throat> excuse me, crosswalks and, uh, and the speeding, that is a problem. However, the, you know, we have a police force, and I would like to see more of them to watch the speeders and watch the people that are not obeying the traffic laws. Um, as far as Armour Road uh, and um, this uh, complete uh, street plan, there were they were called bicycle meetings. Had I known it was going to be on my road down to two lanes, uh, four bicycles, I would have definitely attended. Um, I try to keep abreast of what goes on, uh, but apparently I was not doing that. But people that said, oh, we've had plenty of chances, um, and someone else said, uh, you know, once you, when you see it on paper, it doesn't really sink in until you actually see it. I don't know, there's, there's um, that's probably some of it. But uh, I go to the Y every day, and um, that has added uh, six minutes to my commute, which isn't that much. But what I've seen is um, and heard at the Y, people are just avoiding North Kansas City. And um, I think it's going to hurt businesses downtown. and. Uh, and I also want to put in, there's a reason why we don't, you know, you can't bicycle on a freeway. You know, it, and we are a mobile society. I'm not saying it should be bicycles and cars, but we're not there yet. We're, we're not uh, dependent on cars. We are. And for people to, you know, get from A to B and then have, uh, you know, an option of going somewhere else, they're going to go somewhere else if there's a traffic congestion. I mean, I know I do, and I think that's hurt our businesses downtown. And um, and as far as exercising and things, there's Mackin Park. This is a very progressive city. We have the dog park, and we're flat. You know, we're on the former uh, you're on a floodplain of the Missouri River. We're flat. There's plenty of ways to bicycles and streets to go around. Why did it have to be on a major thoroughfare? Anyway, thank you for your time. <laughs> Sean Tolliver, last call for Sean Tolliver, Mick Leonard, hello everyone, my name is Mick Leonard, I own a home on I guess 1233 23rd Avenue. I have a somewhat different perspective. I sat here for two and a half hours to tell you that I think you did a great job. And I, my wife, Wendy, and I wondered what was going on. Uh, we didn't know about this project. But when we finally figured it out, we thought it looked great. You took, frankly, the ugliest section of town, and you turned it into a main street. And my wife bought two bikes. So am I a biker now? But it looks like I'm going to be a biker. 
You know, and I don't want to bike because I want to wear Lycra and go fast. I just want to get downtown to go to a movie. And I think it's, in, you know, and, and I'm not even from Missouri. I came here in 2015 to take a job as a public defender down in Kansas City, and I was just living in an apartment. And somebody told me there's this place called North Kansas City, but it's not really Kansas City. I'm like, what do you mean? It's like, well, they've been pretty much flipping off Kansas City for the last 50 years and refused to be annexed because they got 4,500 people in a, a casino, and it's a great place to live. So I literally had never been to North Kansas City, and I was trying to live in an apartment, so I was on my motorcycle, I ended up driving down 23rd, just kind of came down North Oak, and, and it was one of the neatest experiences I ever had. The sun was shining, the trees were blooming, kids were riding tricycles out on the street. I saw that the 20 mile an hour speed limit was very strictly enforced, and I think that's kind of cool, especially now that I live there. And people were sitting on their front porches, and people were walking their dogs, and they were talking, and it was a, a community. It was a very special place. It was unlike, I've been all over Jackson County. I don't want to live anywhere. I don't want to live in Waldo. I don't, North Kansas City's special. And you just made it even more special. Because I don't want people just plowing through armor on their way to get someplace. They can go around. You know, or they can drive 20 miles an hour and stop. Because the people that are going to be moving in here are the younger people, and they're going to do what I did, which is see a house the first day you're here, see a for sale sign, walk in and offer full asking price, because I wanted to live there, and I'm glad I bought it. Ari, it's time. Hi, my name is Thor Harrison, and I live on 22nd Avenue, and um, the first thing I want to say is that um, I agree with some of the people that um, you should make, like, a wall in between the bike lane and the road, because if some people um, aren't <coughs> paying attention and they might swerve or accidentally go into the bike lane, someone could get hit, and also that the um, sticks would fly in the snowplow, and um, that I've seen in some places they have bigger sidewalks, um, and <coughs> lots of people ride on them, so if people don't want a bike lane on the road, then maybe you could expand the sidewalks and <coughs> put a line on the, um, in the middle for one side for the um, bike riders and then one side for the people who are walking and that um, people go sometimes well over the speed limit in my neighborhood and also they go the wrong way um, a lot, and, uh, my bus can't really, um, turn on armor or off armor without almost hitting a curb, um, and that's it. Or I love seeing uh, kids being part of our, our civic process. My name's Gina um, Bonfilio Spear, and I'm a resident. I'm a wannabe bicyclist. You know, I got the helmet, I got the gear, I got the bike, but I haven't been on it. Um, <laughs> and I'm a business owner. And I um, love this city. I love um, and appreciate all 
of what the city has done and creates here. And I am here today because I was stunned, quite honestly, to hear that the question before this group is how to just undo a process, undo dollars that were spent. As a business owner, I can't imagine spending almost $700,000, then spending, what, two, $3,000 more to undo it, to end up back where I was at the beginning almost a million dollars later? I just can't imagine that. There's nowhere in the realm of possibility that I would even consider it. To me, today is not about bike lanes or no bike lanes. That's important. I'm going to trust that this city did due diligence, knows how to move snow, knows how to send their police force and their fire department to houses and emergencies. I'm going to trust you did your due diligence in that. My question is, this is about stewardship of funds, and it's about leadership. You all have the authority to throw away those dollars. You have the authority to stop public debate. You have the authority to do that. But authority isn't leadership. Leadership takes courage. Leadership takes the sitting in the face of a whole lot of heat, a whole lot of pressure, a whole lot of debate and difference, and being able to hold steady in that and figure out a different way than just giving up. To me, undoing is giving up. I support Complete Streets. I think there's changes and differences in what is currently there where we need to be. I think um, I'm not, I don't love it how it is. I think there's some more opportunity for change, and I think we've heard a lot about that tonight. I ask you all to exercise leadership. Thank you. Hi, I'm Tanya. I'm a resident and homeowner, and I would like to just say ditto. Um, I love Northtown. I discovered it a few years ago, maybe three years ago, and I too, like this woman here, um, I spent a year and a half with a realtor, a very patient realtor, trying to live here. I paid too much for my house, and I'm happy about it. Um, and I want to stay here. And the reason I was drawn here is because when I came here, what I saw was a city with leadership that was committed to moving forward in a very progressive way. You're talking about solar. You have electric car chargers at the park. You have a park that gets used every day. I'm there often. Should be there more. But that, the number of people in that park is impressive. If any other park in this city was that active, um, I would be amazed. People are here using our city in a very active way. I love being here. And um, my concern, I've been, a I've been supportive of this project from the very beginning. Um, but I will tell you, when it was completed, I scratched my head. I drove around, and I scratched my head. I have an 86-year-old mother that lives with me often, and I agree. I wouldn't park and put her in a wheelchair in those handicapped spots. I wouldn't. Um, but I feel like abandoning the project at this point and spending more money to reverse what's already happened um, is a travesty. Um, I th and irresponsible. So I just beg you to, it takes a lot of courage to do what you've already done a lot of courage to be a progressive city that's um, making changes and inviting a lot of diverse people in. Um, and I think it's going to take a lot of courage to move forward. And I appreciate your public service. Um, you all do a lot for, uh, it's, I know it can be a very thankful, a thankless job. So thank you for hanging in there. And um, I wish you the courage to st stay the course. Thank you.
Uh, hi, Council. My name is Sean uh, Galloway. First of all, uh, thank you for your uh, time tonight and allowing uh, everyone to speak their mind. Give them their three minutes. Uh, I'm a past resident of Northtown, North Kansas City. Um, my daughter graduated from Northtown in 2016. Um, current uh, co-owner of the brewery on uh, Swift. Um, and um, while my business is not directly impacted that much by the Armour Road um, changes uh, since we're on Swift, um, I do travel on Swift a decent amount, um, both with uh, making deliveries to customers or just getting around town. Um, I, yeah, I mean, the changes are, have, been, have been hard, have been a little bit difficult. But as far as anecdotal stories go, even before anything was changed, um, backing out on Armour Road, like in front of Colony, that was pretty difficult, you know, even before any of this was ever done. So, um, in kind of, you know, the traffic that I've encountered driving throughout the city in certain parts is not any worse. Um, I mean, it's way worse, like compared to if, if you drive through Liberty, uh, you know, per se. Um, also, as a business owner, I kind of want to give you an, uh, a, a, what I see um, since we're a retail business, um, for some, somewhat. Um, every time I tell people where we're at, where we do business, um, they're like, wow, North Kansas City, there's so much going on down there. You know, just great positive energy and vibes that we get. We get three or four people a week that come into our business and are like, man, I'd love to live down here, but can't find a spot, can't find a place to live. Um, you know, North Kansas City is, is really on the map, and this Complete Streets program keeps it there. I mean, it's, this isn't, I don't really see it so much as bikes versus cars. Like, I see it more about the direction the city's going to take over the next 10 to 15 years. Um, you know, change is usually pretty hard. And um, I've seen a lot of changes in the past 10 years as, um, in North Kansas City, being on the uh, Snake Saturday Council. Um, I'm, I'm very much against the removal of the uh, construction currently done. Um, the main reason as a business owner and a taxpayer and a business that generates sales tax revenue, um, it's completely fiscally irresponsible to do this. Um, in addition, the public relations hit would be tremendous, in my opinion. Um, the city is really becoming, it's already a unique spot to, to visit, to bike, to walk, to explore. And um, there's so much more that could happen with this town. So thank you very much. Um, my name is Andrea, and I'm a resident. I live on the 23rd um, block, and I'm not against cyclists or bicycles. I'm, you know, I don't ride them either, but I don't hate them. Um, but what my main concern is not having a bike lane. That's fine if they wanna. Right, bike, you know, like, yeah, like they should have where to ride it. I'm not against that. I, I am concerned about the parking, the, those parking spaces, because they, they look dangerous. I'm like, I will not use them. Um, I have heard a lot of people saying, you know, the same. Um, and like, I'm not concerned about the traffic. I drive. Um, armor roll several times a, a day, um, every day. My job is I'm in and out of my house like probably three or four times a day. So I'm on the road, on armor roll, like on different times, like early in the morning, uh, mid morning, afternoon. And it's not that bad. It's not great, obviously, but it's traffic. It's not, it's not that bad. What I don't see on all those times is the cyclists. I don't see them riding their bike around any of those times. And I, I have heard people say, like, you know, they are here a lot at nighttime, so when there is not a lot of traffic. Um, I don't think that we need to throw the whole project away, because like other people have mentioned, that would be like, OK, a really waste of money. Um, 
but do they need to be something better implemented? Probably. I don't know what, but it should like it should be something that we we should take a look of how it's been done and what can we do to make it better so everybody can be happy and safe, which is the ultimate goal, I think. Thank you. Hi, my name's Sarah, and I'm a resident on 23rd Avenue. I've got a few points I'm gonna hit on, so I'm gonna go quick. <coughs> parking spots. Y'all, every parallel parking spot in the world, you open your car door lane into traffic. Look before you open the door. I'm not saying there's not tweaks to be made, but I'm saying it's no different than any other parallel parking spot in the city. Not North Kansas City, the whole city. Pay attention. And that goes for the drivers as well. Pay attention. This project is, I honestly think it's perfect. So, you know, that's just me. Um, I know that y'all are gonna vote tonight about removing the parking spots and opening Armour back up to two lanes. And I want you to think about safety. Armour Road as two lanes has never been safe. To pull out into a car, to drive a bicycle, to cross it on foot. And I see more pedestrians then I, I mean, I see bicyclists, I'm pro bicyclists, I love the cyclists here, but I am more concerned about the pedestrians. They need a safe way to cross the road. And when it was four lanes, it wasn't safe. And <clears throat> I want y'all to think about the streetcar. That's something that potentially will be coming down Burlington. And if y'all removed some of this or any of this, I don't think that that's gonna happen. They're gonna look at what this city did and I think they're gonna change their minds about coming here. And think about that and think about the future of the city. Where is the city headed in the next 20 plus years? Don't do it for yourself. Although that is important, the people that are here now are important. But think about who you're doing this for. This is for the children that are gonna grow up and live here. This is for future generations, future residents, future business owners, all the above. I was one of the people collecting petition signatures. We have almost 700 and that was in 12 days. You guys gave us 12 days to get this organized. And I feel like we've had a pretty good turnout and I feel like 700 signatures to keep this project is pretty impressive. But given more time, imagine what we can do and imagine the numbers we would have. Um, I don't think people are avoiding the area because of traffic. People wanna come here, they wanna park, they wanna walk around, they wanna enjoy the businesses. And we have amazing businesses here to enjoy. Um, if we throw away the $100,000 grant from the Mid-America Regional Council, when we go to apply for another grant and they look at the fact that we undid this 17 days post-completion, what are they gonna think? They're not gonna wanna give us any more grant money. Um, the Delinators, I like them, I think they work great, I think they could be a brighter color. That is my one tweak that I would like to say. And I'll leave you with this. You guys unanimously approved this measure I really want you to remember that and who you did it for and why you thought this was a good idea. It was for all of us and keep that in mind. Wait. <clears throat> Speaker list is complete. Okay. Well, we open it for council discussion. Right. Yeah, you know, we got three basic groups. The ones who want to keep it like it is today major good points the ones that wanted all gone back late what it was and the third group wants to compromise that's something new in this whole country compromise <coughs> no one here sitting tonight wants to do away with that I know of the bike lane it's some of the other stuff we want to do away with because it didn't work did we all vote on it yes but armor road is broken and we broke it and we need to fix it. The best speaker we had tonight was the youngest one. She recognized the fact that that is not a safe bike lane. It's called a protected bike lane because of the white sticks. Believe me, a car can go over them. I've already done it. <laughs> and that's trying to get into the post office uh, <laughs> drive-through. Not on purpose. I don't want to skin my truck up. 
but you can't see them when you're that close to them. They're not going to protect a bicyclist. When this came up three or four years ago, I made a suggestion, and the young lady hit on it too. I wish she was here that night. I suggested putting the bike trail on the other side of the curb. The sidewalks are basically three foot in most cities. Make them six foot, eight foot if you have to, but that's the safest way for a bicycle to go. Have you ever thought, and the, the parking, they don't even get me started on that. I don't like it at all, and I'll be truthful about it. Have you ever wondered, now that proposed Burlington improvements includes a bike lane? Not, not in the street, on the sidewalk side of the curb. This project only goes to Ozark for the same reason that you're going to have bike trails on Burlington off the street. They're state highways. We don't own anything east of Ozark, the street. It's a state highway. People blame us for the exiting work they're doing. We had nothing to do with it. It's MoDOT and the state. I have heard from many businesses, only one likes the way it turned out. And they didn't say anything. I'm telling you what I got emails from. One company, the bicycle guy. I don't think you're supposed to. I didn't interrupt you, so don't interrupt me. I'm telling you the truth. I got lots of emails from people wanting to stay like it is, but not businesses. Uh, I don't know. You know, I mentioned those three groups and what you all want. You all can't have it. Not all three of you. You know, somebody's not going to be happy. Jesse? Thank you. So first off, thank you all for coming out. This has been a marathon meeting. And for the people who are still here, this is incredible to see this public engagement. Um, you're right. This project was years in the making. Uh, a lot of public engineer or a lot of public meetings, engineers engaged. A lot of money spent, including public grants. And the concern over the future of public grants if we reverse course is valid. Um, we are not engineers, and thus we're not qualified to make changes on the fly. Uh, we hear what you're saying. Uh, there's some issues with parking. There might be some handicap things that need adjustment. There might be some signal timing that needs to be addressed. Um, but we don't know those answers yet. This has been in place for 17 days. Um, and when I walked in this morning or this afternoon, I was surprised to find a motion uh, sitting on, on my spot here that advocates taking out the parking, returning to two lanes each direction, repainting, uh, and a number of other things to reconfigure the street. Um, this was not written up by an engineer, um, and thus not has had no data behind it. So hearing what I've heard tonight, um, I, I've grouped people into two categories. Um, one who say, take it back to the way it was. We had 15 of those that were pretty firmly in that camp. And then 55 who were saying, let's give it some time, let's be patient, let's collect some data, and let's find out where to go from here, in addition to a petition that went around with hundreds of signatures within the city and from people who visit here and spend money. Um, so I don't really uh, want that motion that's sitting before us to hit the table, so I'm going to put a motion on to table this matter uh, for any public or any official action to allow for study, data collection, assessment, and public input sessions for an adjustment period of no less than six months. At that point, hey, at that point, we will conduct a traffic study and determine the actual impact on traffic flow and bike traffic. Council at that time will prov provide guidance with better information and with the assistance of an engineer in addressing and correcting identified issues. That's my motion. Second. We have a first and a second? Yes. And this is 
a motion to table this. We're not going to have further discussion on this before the motion is complete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I would like to, I would like to say something when it's my turn. Oh, right, go ahead. Okay. So this has been a very hot topic issue, and it's really engaged our residents. And I'm glad to see this number of people out here tonight voicing their opinion. And I think that the city does a good job in letting people know what's going on or what meetings we're going to have. Do we maybe need to structure those meetings a little different to provide different options if you don't like something? Yes, I think so. I know that traffic has been somewhat of an issue on Armour Road. Um, I'm not a traffic expert either. Okay. Um, the plan isn't perfect, but I do like some of the aspects of the plan because I'm a pedestrian. I don't drive and I cross Armour Road. Okay, but it's not all about me. It's about what's best for the town. Um, some of our businesses are infected. Are affected. The post office has issues. It sounds like pretty much almost everybody agrees with the problem of the parking in front of the post office. I think that's something that needs to be immediately addressed in front of the post office as soon as we can. But I also think that as far as being good stewards of what we've done, and granted, it may have looked different on paper than it did uh, on the street. But I think we do need to take just a little more time to look at this, analyze it, and see where we're going to go from there and see if we can't come to a decent compromise with everybody on the table. I know that you know some people want a bike on Armour Road. It's maybe a connection from Diamond Parkway to connect over to the track on Burlington to go down to over the heart of America. Uh, I see how it ties in. And I want our businesses to know that I hear you as well, and that Armour Road, we know it has some issues. We need to fix it. But I'm sorry if my vote upsets one group or the other, but I think we just need to take just a little bit more time. I think six months maximum uh, to really look at this. Anybody else? I have a few things I want to say. <clears throat> First of all, um, wow, you guys were super impressive tonight, and not just you, but those who have left. Um, it's really exciting, and we don't put um, issues on the table like this to create controversy. However, when they come up, it's really exciting to see everyone come to the table and share your ideas. Uh, it's really great for me to hear from the residents and the visitors and the, and the businesses. So thank you for that feedback uh, today. I'm on my third term, and every term, um, you know, I've been voted in for the values that I have brought to my position. And a gentleman, actually a council member from Kansas, I think maybe Westwood, uh, was one of the first to speak, and he said that this really is about values, and in my mind, this really, really is about values. If we're going to be a commuter city where people pass through and go to work in Kansas City and live up north, great. That's not my value, and I don't think that's the value of most of my ward. I have some who disagree with me in my ward, so I will hear them out, and I have heard them out. Um, however, I think that we're a community that's a family-friendly community, a healthy community. I think this is the type of community we want to be. I think this is why our property values are increasing. I think this is why people are having a hard time finding homes. I think this is why people sell their homes so quickly. So these are all connected. These aren't separate. And for me, this, this value is important, and it's obviously important to my residents who've continued to vote uh, me into office. So I would say we've talked a lot about bike lanes. I'm a supporter of bike lanes. I had a very good friend who got killed by a car when I was in college. I'll be very transparent and open about that. There were no protected bike lanes where she was. She was hit by a car behind her. She got f thrown off into oncoming car. That car ran her over. I mean, it was terrible. So I'm a believer in bike lanes, protected bike lanes. I love what the, what the little girl said about the protected bike lanes. But this issue for me is not really about bike lanes as much as we've been talking about them. It's about, one, it's about a complete street, and a complete street is pedestrians, it's bikes, it's cars, it's a street car, it's whatever you're going to put on that street. That's what a complete street is, and we have to make room for everybody. The second thing, this is about creating a downtown, and we haven't really talked about that so much tonight, but when we took those four lanes of traffic, and we brought that down to two, and we did that for three blocks. You would think it was three miles, frankly, from the <laughs> feedback, but it was three blocks. So we took that four lanes down to two, and we all did vote on it, and understandably so. It's to create a downtown environment. It's to build our downtown. We only have 
so much of a downtown. It's a big asset for us. And you see this across the city. This is happening. And it's irritating across the, the town. It's in Smithville. It's other cities who are trying to create their downtowns. We're doing the same type of thing. We're trying to create that downtown. It will cause conflict. It will cause change. It'll cause hard feelings. It'll cause frustration. I totally understand that. So, but bear with us. I think we're trying to work with everyone. We're trying to make solutions that work. Uh, I am in agreement to, uh, to Jesse's uh, motion, and I'm in agreement to just kind of step back and take a look at what we can tweak, what we can, you know, modify a little bit, make it easier for some turns to happen. The delineators are weird, right? I mean, they're distracting. It's really if you're, especially if you're older or you have visual issues, they're really kind of weird, and I get it. Uh, so let's take a step back. Let's look at maybe a curb, bringing a curb out. Let's look at a protected bike lane. Let's look at some easier transportation. Uh, and let's just take some time and, and hear everyone out. And, and maybe we need some sort of a committee that's, you know, citizen and business and, you know, w with workable solutions, not just complaining, but with workable solutions about how to move forward. Thank you. And I'd like to thank everybody for coming out as well. And one of the things that I really noticed tonight is that thoughtful way everyone brought their opinion to the table. Whether they disagreed or agreed with each other, um, I take, I, I just feel a lot of pride in North Kansas City with this sort of divisiveness going on to see everybody come together and treat each other with such respect that I really do believe that compromise is possible. I look forward to hearing your ideas on compromise. I too think we need to tweak things. Obviously, it's brand new. It's like less than a month old. Um, and I appreciate your coming out and expressing your point of view, uh, be it positive or negative, towards the complete street program. That's what makes our town so great, is that you do come out. I think a lot of towns our size would never have this sort of participation over an issue. And I'm real proud of you, citizen, and real proud of you all for coming in. I'm going to end up echoing a lot of what we heard tonight as well as some uh, other council members, but I want to thank everyone for coming out. It was great to see Council Member Sanders come out as well as see some of our youth speak. Uh, when I reflect on why this project is important, it, it always comes back to safety. Safety for all users of the road. And this project does, does just that, provides a safer road. Slower speeds equal safer streets. I use similar stats to talk about how, but I feel it's a good time to bring them up again. Some data sets show a fatality rate of less than 10% for car pedestrian impacts under 30 miles an hour. At 40 miles an hour, that fatality rate goes up to about 50%. And despite a low fatality rate, under 30%, approximately half of pedestrian fatalities occurred in an impact of 30 miles an hour or below. For older pedestrians, that fatality rate is exponentially higher. Slower speeds equal safer streets. The Armour Road Complete Street Project has been one I've been excited about ever since I joined council. It started just before I came on. And it was, I think it was in our my second or third meeting, we had a work session about it, and, and I knew it's a project I wanted to embrace from the beginning. Is, is a parent of an active, well now, three and five year old who loves to walk, bike, and scoot around town. The pedestrian improvements on Armour, one of the most important aspects of this project for me. When I look around, I see many other families just like mine. I also see our older residents who benefit from these improvements. These families deserve safe streets. We all deserve safe streets. Previous to the improvements, pedestrians wanting to cross Armour east of Fayette had to cross at least five lanes. Some places, more than that. This section of Armour Road was once described in this very chamber as the Wild West. Well, that is no more. Now, when crossing Armour Road, pedestrians are only exposed to two or three lanes of traffic. And I think we, need, we definitely need to recognize the community is changing, it's continuing to change, and we need to make sure we're adopting policies that reflect that change. The Armour Road Complete Street Project is a perfect example of that, and we can't turn our backs on progress. I think over the last several weeks, we've started to get a better idea of specific concerns people are having with the project. Congestion, parallel parking in front of the post office, clarity on some of the changes. And I'm glad to hear we're discussing, we're, we're starting to discuss, or a proposal to discuss further some of those concerns. Uh, for example, one concern over the parallel parking around the post office. There's a lot of different ways I think you could do things there, and I, and I hope that through these discussions we can get engineers and get people out there and maybe find some viable alternatives. When I hear parking spaces, parallel parking spaces overall, though, where I hear the biggest issue is around the post office. Every night I'm seeing them used by the park lofts. 
And so I'd definitely like to separate these different issues we're talking about and just not blanket parallel parking, blanket refer to parallel parking spaces. The handicapped spaces, I feel are an issue too. We need to look at those. And so we will stop there. There we go. That's all. I, I have a concern about, I, I've heard rumors that the, the post office is having problems getting their trucks in and out. I'm also concerned about the mop bucket having their trucks getting in and out too. We need to address that thoroughly. I mean, the businesses is what keeps us alive. It's what brings taxpayer revenue in at, at this moment in time. And, and I'm assuming if we're saying six months, we're, we're talking like April the 15th. I'm, I'm asking that as a question. Someone needs to answer me. Yeah, I had not to exceed six months in the motion, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, at least six months in the motion. Um, the original plan, I believe, and Sarah can help me with this, was May to do the traffic study. That's more than six months. We did baseline traffic counts last May, and we would plan to repeat those this coming year, so this coming May, so that we have a 12-month apples-to-apples comparison as much as we can. What was the date of that one? Was it May 6th? I would have to look. Okay. I just remember it was in the month of May. We did several counts around town, so they're all on a different date in May. Okay. Does doing it a month or two early, does that really make a difference? The reason I push for the year over year is part, it was part of the original plan, and it gives some warm weather time for people to be out and about engaging the street without snow on it, with okay. bikers going to and from, pedestrians out. Um, so the, the reason I said six months or more to, to look at it, I, I think May, whatever the date was of the original study, we do it again, and that's the point where we, we make some decisions. Or more could be two years. Oh, we, I just said May. Could I, uh, could I ask our engineer that's here, <laughs> do you see any answers to the situation down there at the uh, Mount Bucket and also at the uh, post office? Um, I can certainly get more information from city staff and figure out what kind of trucks are driving through there. I think that the best thing is getting input from them and watching the trucks out there. Um, and that would provide more or as much value as um, I can use turning software to see what a truck would do, but seeing how it's built, watching them out there and making adjustments may be the best course forward. Well, my understanding is that the post office is already uh, looking at it internally to see whether or not they even want to stay to put up with it. You know, I mean, I think we need to get down there and talk to them. Uh, you know, that's, that's the word. Have we had any actual discussion with the post office, or is this just what you've heard through the grapevine? From the landlords of the post office, yes. I'd be certainly willing to... If, if city staff wanted me to be out there, I'd be willing to talk to them about what their issues are and possible solutions or ways to mitigate um, any trouble that they might be having. Along that line, and I don't want to hold your feet to the fire because that's really not fair to do tonight in this setting, but how long do you anticipate as an engineer, again, you can ballpark it for us since we're putting together a time where we all gather back together in this. How long do you think it would take you to look at those two specific issues only? Because there's other issues that will be brought up. I mean, if they're going to revamp some of this, tweak some of these things as an engineer, how long do you think it would take for you to look at issues? To look at the truck turning? Uh, let's just talk those two. Um, the post office and the mop bucket at this point. I, I can use uh, computer software to see what it tells me that a truck can and cannot do um, as long as I have the size of their truck. And we already have the size of all the improvements out there. So um, in the next couple of weeks, that could be done. That's great. Thank you. Fred? Well, you know, we did, we, there's been a number of years going over this. And the 2015 traffic impact study that was done, uh, you know, it, it, from then going forward to 2019, 
uh, everything in between. It looked uh, really good on paper, but um, <clears throat> boy, in practice, it doesn't look very good in front of the post office area and uh, with the delineator problem and the parking in front of the post office. It, it's really difficult for a lot of people. And that includes also the business next door to it, which is the mop bucket. Those people are hurting. And um, all we're doing here with that motion is really kicking the can down the road. Uh, it needs to be addressed some, at least some modifications on this in some areas. And I would say particularly the post office area. <clears throat> I, I believe that um, that motion wasn't just kicking the can down the road. I do think we need to come up with a specific date, but I think that that motion also included the opportunity to give time for public feedback and find a forum. It's our responsibility as council members to find a forum where we can invite the public who's spent their time here today to sort of group together as we come upon, like, I don't think they'll argue with the mop bucket or with the post office if there's some reasonable modifications. But if we're talking about other kinds of changes, we really need to incorporate the public. They've clearly said we need to incorporate them in these meetings. So, you know, I would propose to add on to Jesse's amendment that we do put a date, that we all come together with some of these ideas. We got a lot of time in between here and then to visit with the public, that we readdress this issue in a public forum on our first meeting in June, which would be the 2nd of June. So not quite sure procedurally how to amend what Jess Got to second proposed. that amendment. <laughs> you would have to. Jesse would need to withdraw his, wouldn't he? And Start then she would again. amend it. Or he, he can move okay, you can just amend. Yeah. She can just amend. So she can amend it to add that date for, uh, add a date for a traffic study. And, uh, so I, I don't want the traffic study to happen sooner. I think the traffic study should wait until spring. But I do think that what I'm hearing is there are some changes that need to be evaluated sooner than spring or um, <clears throat> whenever that is. So. I think if we can, I don't know how to do this from a motion perspective, but if we can do a work session or something in the next, you know, two weeks, four weeks, something like that, where we can get some action on some of those items. Sure, I, if I may, Mr. Yeah. Mayor. Uh, well, I just, I would, I, I appreciate Nick saying he gets something done in a couple of weeks. I think that actually sounds a little bit ambitious right. to me. So I, uh, I would, you know, I think it sounds to me like the engineer needs some time to take a hard look at it to really observe. We regardless of the motion, understand that direction, that, that there's a particular interest in the case of that business and the post office. We can try to spend some time looking at that, at seeing what possible solutions we might recommend to you as shorter term measures with the understanding that you'll be looking at longer term measures uh, in a little over six months. But the staff understands, okay. I believe, that all, it sounds to me like all of the council members are, are supportive of us looking at those two things uh, sooner rather than later and so we, we get that and we would come back to you as soon as we thought we had some solid uh, possibilities for you to consider okay so a short term and a long term plan we don't need to vote tonight on removing all of the I mean I'm not making a motion to remove all the the work so we don't need to really vote on that tonight it doesn't sound like as long as we well, stay if the you course. Vote, if you vote on the motion, if you were to vote affirmatively on the motion before you, we understand the direction to move okay. forward in the case of those two areas short term. Okay. okay. Thank you. So I'd like to amend Jesse's motion to include that at every meeting that we get a staff report. Second. Can we have the so have we even amended the motion to the second of June yet? We, we've lost. Where are that. we at? What I have <laughs> is that he made the motion to table it till a meeting on June second with a staff report at each meeting in between. And to address our post office and mop bucket short issues. Term issues. Short term. But I don't. I don't need. Do I need that in that motion? Well, I I, I, I don't want staff to write the motion for you. Okay. So again. 
we understand, first of all, I understand what Council Member Farr is asking. You know, the next Council meeting will tell you where we are on this. It may not be that we've yet, brought, you know, gotten to a point of, of uh, being able to bring something to you, but we'll tell you where we are. So I understand that direction. I also understand the direction to uh, have the engineer take a look at the mop bucket and post office areas. Uh, aside from that, it seems to me uh, you don't necessarily have to amend the motion. But if you don't add the, the mop bucket and the problem with the post office to his, then we're going to make an official motion to wait six months, but we're not going to make it official to address the problem at the mop bucket. By all means, uh, change the motion if to, 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 to fit whatever you want to do. Yeah. I'm not sure what the motion is anymore. I mean, either. <laughs> well, Chris, would you go over it again as you understand it? As I understand the motion now, <laughs> yes. This is really how the sausage is made right here. <laughs> we have a motion to table for the long term till 6 2 of 19. 20. I mean, 20. Oh, Thank good you. job. With a staff report at all the meetings in between there, and in the short term, we will address the problem with the mop bucket and the post office. Yeah. What's a short truck? Really truck, truck traffic, I, I I'm guess. just, I, that's the word they that was used. They can't tell us that, Fred. The engineer just said he can't give you a definitive date, although we're making it a priority via this motion. Um, do we need to make a motion to accept the new motion? Okay, good. So, <laughs> Do we have a... Are you still seconding the motion? I second the motion. Okay. Are we doing Jesse roll call? made the motion. Let's do roll call. Do roll call. Call the roll, I guess. Okay. The motion for you guys? Okay. One more time. The motion that's on the table at this time is to table this item until the June 2nd, 2020 meeting. There will be a staff report at all meetings from now until then, and in the short term, they will work on the issues with the mop bucket and the post office. Parking and, and truck traffic. Parking and ingress and egress. Mm -hmm. No, that was not in the motion. That was not in the motion. Okay, so the mop bucket and po post office parking. And ingress and egress. And, yeah. And access. Access. Okay. Now, is everybody good or do I need to do it one more time? Do, do we need to put the date for the traffic study? No, because it's already, we don't know where, necessary. we don't have a definitive date, do we, for the traffic study? We don't want to hold your feet to the bed either, Sarah. <laughs> I mean, it would be impossible for us to commit to a date because that has to be done when there's no rain. I, I can't <laughs> commit to a date in May when there won't be rain. Okay. 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 That's fair. Okay. Am I good? You're good. Shall I call roll, Mayor? Call roll. Rick Stewart. Yes. Fred Steffen. Yes. Tom Farr. Yes, ma'am. Bryant DeLong. Yes. Rita Pierce. Yes. Jesse Smith. Yes. Valerie Pierman. Yes. Zach Clevenger. Yes, ma'am. Move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, <guys. laughs> That was a lot of work.